Commissioner's Office of Highway Safety reminding you to buckle up Georgia as we are here for our third of four championship games on the day here from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It's the 5A championship, the Coffee Trojans from Region 1 and the Seminoles of Creekside from Region 5. We are so thrilled you are here with us here in downtown Atlanta. Larry Smith here with Rusty Manziel. Coffee trying to win their first ever championship. Creekside's been here before. 10 years ago to the day they won their first title, taking on a Tucker on that night. Rusty, what are some things you're looking for in tonight's game? You talk about Coffee trying to win their first ever state championship, kind of survived that first initial kind of Creekside attack. Creekside's been here, done that. Coffee, a lot of pressure to win that first state championship. Just survive those first few minutes, settle into the game. Yeah, and everyone trying to really try to get their emotions in check as well. It's been a long time since they played back on uh, December 1st. How about some uh, key players of the game? Let's start with the Coffee and their offense. And no doubt about it, it starts with senior running back Fred Brown, kind of that bowling ball, five foot nine and a half, 205 pounds, 210 pounds. I talked to Cartersville today that played him last week that said, Rusty, he is sneaky athletic, and the word they used, he finds that hidden yardage and he will wear you down four quarters of that young man you have to make a business decision if you're going to tackle That's him right. <laughs> on the defensive side you look at that senior defensive end lg park what i love about him he's old school he gets in a four-point stance you see him right there relentless motor he's going to be key today if they're going to get creekside in some negative plays they have been outstanding all season long meanwhile on the other side for creekside and the seminoles They've got a star on offense as well that we'll be watching. They got several, but Coach Mo Dixon told me this week, Travis Terrell is the best player in 5A, period. Wow. He impacts the game on both sides of the ball. He's a lockdown corner. He plays running back. He plays wide receiver. Got nine offers. From, he may have more when it's over with. He's a three-star already, but he is the guy that makes Creekside go. And let me tell you this, on the defensive side, they list this young man at 6'5", 340. He hadn't seen 340 in a couple of winners. I can tell you that. <laughs> the Florida commit probably going to play today around 380, six foot five, and nobody has blocked him one on one all year. Coffee's got their hands full with that anchor. I can tell you that right now. He's a big boy. That's a grown man. Defense. That's a man. That's right. The third member of our team is Nikki Noto Palmer. Let's go down to the sidelines for more from Nikki. How are you? Hey there, guys. Well, look, when we talked to Coach Code this week, he said you win state championships by having good people. Now, of course, he was talking about his players, but he was also talking about the Coffee High School faculty that have completely bought in to his guys. Now, here's what I mean by that. So when you see their helmet tonight, you're going to see all the stickers on the dome of the helmet, which typically coaches give those stickers, right? However, at Coffee, Coach Code brought this idea to send a faculty-wide email out on Wednesdays to see if any of his guys have given excellent character or performed excellence in the classroom and in return deserve a helmet sticker. It's a pretty cool thing, he said, because here's why the faculty has bought in. The guys love receiving stickers from the teachers, and in return, they are forming incredible bonds and relationships with said faculty that support them on and off the field. How cool is that? Very cool. Nikki, thanks so much. Great insight as we get ready for this. i tell you what, we have got quite a crowd. Creekside, of course, in South Fulton County and the entire lower level just below our uh, positioning here in the 50-yard line uh, here on the east side of the stadium. Rusty is full of maroon. Nobody left in Douglas, Georgia tonight. I can guarantee you can go out to eat anywhere. You can do any shopping you want because they're all right here in the Mercedes Benz. Yeah, it's out outstanding. Looking forward to uh, taking a look here at both coaches as we uh, get ready for this 5A championship tilt. What a contest this figures to be. See, see Coach Dixon, Dixon right yep. there, man. He is. What a program and what a job he's done at Creekside. Outstanding, 13 and one, but their one loss was pretty impressive. We'll get into that here in just a Ooh moment. Um, as we get ready for our opening kickoff, brought to you by Buckle Up Georgia, seatbelts save lives. Creekside won the toss and deferred, so they will take the ball first in the second half, and they will kick off here. Wearing their home maroon and white helmets, coffee in their visiting white. Class 5A championship about to get underway. 3A title is already done. Cedar Grove won that one. Ball is loose at the 10 yard line, but he recovers in time. That's not the way you want to start. 
Anthony Polk there, the defensive back, recovers, and that's where Coffey will take over first and ten. Yeah, you already see the speed of Creekside covering that kick. You don't want to bobble anything because they are coming in a hurry, and they back up Coffey to start the game. You take a look at Maurice Hansley and what he has done this year. Completion 71% of his passes, 15 touchdowns against only two interceptions. And coach talking about just how efficient he has been for them during this season. And Rusty, as you mentioned, can they tamp down the emotions of their first ever time here in the Dome? Handoff on first down. Good yardage there to start. Very nicely done, and that's Fred Brown, the big guy right there. Let's take a look at the starting lineups right now, brought to you by Regents. Get back in the game with Regents Bank. Grant, Turner, Ruiz, Smith, and Smith up along the front. Brown, we just saw Gerard, McCall, Shook, and Cole are the names we'll be calling into the scope positions for these Trojans. And Brown yet again, and uh, Rusty, like you said, kind of sneaky right there. Yep. A lot more athletic than, he, than you think he is. You see them? Listen. He's not built like Garrison Hurst. It doesn't matter to him. He can't get 150 <laughs> yards in the state championship. I can that's tell right. you that. That's right. Four yards there, third and one. They go to Brown again. Powers his way. Met by a host of dark shirts. Doesn't matter. And you can feel the energy from Coffee. This is right up their alley. They want to run the ball down your throat. They don't care if they throw it all night. They will feed Fred Brown as long as they can do that. Look at that, just smash mouth football. Boy, I tell you, that was Major Lavelle was right there to meet him head on. Didn't matter. Brown's going to win that battle. Get it out to the 23-yard line, first and 10. Keeper, Hensley, he's got a seam, 30 and more. He's to midfield. He's got two men to beat. Can they catch him? And they finally get him out of bounds. Ricky McCrary with the speed. And Carter Hicks right behind him, but Maurice Hansley on the keeper left side for 56 yards. Man, they hit you a couple times in the middle, and all of a sudden you got your eyes there looking in the middle, quarterback keeper, and he's off to the races. Creekside fast on defense, doesn't let him score, but a huge chunk play for Coffey. Yeah, all eyes on Brown on that one, and that freed him up on the outside for Hensley, and then uh, a little offsides here, false start. We'll walk off five yards, and we'll try again. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. So referee Todd Downs, and one of the top referees in the state of Georgia. We appreciate all their work all season long. And look there at Todd, and also the guys he's working with here on this late afternoon day in downtown Atlanta. Those guys are graded. They're rewarded to get to the state championship. You have to grade out to to get this achievement. So good job by that staff. How about this Creekside defense spelling that one out? Let's take a look at them close up. Brought to you by Regions. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. Johnson, Barrow, as you mentioned, the big boy. Uh, head to the next level up front there. Lavelle, we've already talked about. Blakey and Tamari Terrell. Uh, just a freshman, by the way. In the backfield, Williams, Hicks, McCrary, Harper, and Gray in the backfield for these Seminoles from Creekside High School. Second and 15, no game there, and Brown spins out of one tackle, but he's got a holster shirts right there. Nice job by the defense. Yeah, you're going to see the safety right there, Ricky McQuarrie, one of the twins, Roderick zero, and Ricky's number one, four-year starters. They're seniors, and you're talking about a nose for the football. Good job, penetration right there. Causes Brown to bounce it out. You want big man running east and west. You don't want him going north and south. Creekside <laughs> will take that all day long if they can get Fred Brown to run east-west. That's right. Great job there by Williams. Third and 15 now on that play. Coming from behind with the sack. Oh, my goodness. What a play. Zarian Jones coming from the weak side. Yeah, they call him Saint. And watch him just bend and blow by that tackle. Doesn't even get a hand on him because mm -hmm. the speed is there. And that could be a problem. You want to see that on tape. May have to have a extra H back or somebody to help chip over there because yep. right there that was that was speed. Zarian Jones you see five sacks on the season. Four yard loss was now fourth and 19. They've got to get all the way up to the 12. Hansley to pass has a man but he overthrew him. 
And they'll turn the ball over on downs. What a great job, Rusty, by the Creekside defense after giving up that big play, buckling down, settling in, and making the stop. Yeah, I mean, great job here. They're going to go man to man. They're not going to fool you. See that? It's three on three right there. Creekside is not here to disguise things. And I'll tell you what, on defense, coffee's the same way. We're going to line you up like basketball. It's man to man all night long for both teams interested in who can win. Look at this formation right here. As Creekside goes five wide <laughs> to one side. We get a wide shot of that. Look at that. Now Roger McCrary comes over. Next to Vincent Berry. The quarterback. Lots of motion happening. Handoff very quickly there to Travis Terrell. There was a lot going on there at the start. Yeah, that's a lot of eye candy, sort of. I guess, you know, really the motion there. People run motion. Kind of see what you're in. See what kind of coverage you're in. Anytime you see that offensive player go in motion and that defensive guy go with him, you know it's man to man. Yep. Just checking to see what the defense is in. Look, good numbers here by Vincent Barry. 39 touchdowns on the season, just four interceptions. So we've got a couple of very savvy quarterbacks here that don't make a lot of mistakes. Six yard pickup by Terrell. Barry's first throw under pressure instead. He'll tuck it. And get out of bounds short of a first down. Boy, what great speed there in the backfield. Yeah, both teams, man, they're going to close quickly. Let's take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Regents. Get back in the game with Regents Bank. The guys up front, Holmes, Williams, Noel, Robertson, and Milford. The guys protecting the skill players, McCrary, Terrell, we've already talked about, Vickerson, Kelly, and Eric Paul, the wide receiver, just a sophomore, 5'8", 150. Left tackle, 74, Caleb Holmes committed to Pittsburgh. Over 13 other offers. That's impressive. They're getting a good one. Third and one now. Terrell in motion. And flags everywhere. This is going to come back. He gets the first down, but it's well, he's going to hold. We've got something here on Creekside. We've got a player down. He just tied his shoe. Yes. Against the offense. Two men in motion. The second man did not get reset. Replay. Third down. Man, the speed of this and the physicality. Yeah. You can hear this popping yeah. up. I don't know if it's leather anymore, but whatever they're made of, those pads, it's popping. Yeah, yes, it is. I don't want to show my age. The leather's That's popping. Right. No right. more leather, but whatever they're wearing, That's it's right. popping. Well, we've we've seen pictures. You know, yeah. you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. You can feel it, man. Yeah. Watch the speed of this game right here. And yeah, the pop shoe here on camera, that's not manufactured. That stuff is real. <laughs> it is, this is, this nope. is grown man football. That's right. That's right. 5A title game. Class 7A championship coming up next. Third and six. Barry under pressure. Goes deep and it overthrows his man trying to get the ball there. His receiver in that. Wasn't going to go, and it brings up four down. I talked to Cartersville head coach Connor Foster, talking about Creekside, and he said, uh, talking about coffee. He said, Rusty, when we met as a staff, we got done. We felt like coffee had the best secondary we faced all year. Maybe not a bunch of D1 guys, but as a unit, there wasn't one weak spot we felt like we could attack. And I'm interested today because coffee's going to play Creekside man to man. That's going to be some big time battles. Shane Kelly, the intended receiver, there on third down, so brings out the punt team. See head coach Mike Coe. It's out of the way. Coming up short. It'll go out of bounds. Taking the ball away from Tyreek Edwards. 31 yards on that kick. We are just on the way. 5A championship. Here we go. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a really nice day living in the right space. Breathing your face got me feeling so kind of way. Blink of an eye, so many tomorrows can disappear. Buckle up for your future, every trip, every time. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. 
High school seniors, your Georgia match letters have been mailed and the possibilities are endless. Visit your student dashboard on gafutures.org to see which of the 45 colleges and universities made your list and claim your spot today. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. Come over here. Welcome back live right here inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Hey, let's get to the keys of the game brought to you by Breda Pest Management, the official pest control of high school football. You get coffee to offense. Tempo is key, and I mean tempo a little different than some people think. They want to run the football, establish the run, and stay on Creekside. And you look at Creekside, obviously they want to control the line of scrimmage. They don't want to have these long drives and get worn down, and they want to tackle Big Fred Brown. He cannot bounce off and six, seven yard us to death today. No, no, and he's seen that a couple of times already as uh, Coffee now in its second offensive series in this game. And there he is, Big Brown. That's what you can't do, Rusty. 10 yards and more, first down and more, and they're into Creekside territory. 17 yards on the carry. Man, he, he's just falling for him. Watch the <laughs> legs grinding here. Keep watching. Good move there. And yeah. just look how low he is, man. Keeps those legs moving, too. Man. Great center of gravity. Look how patient he look is. Look at that. Fred Brown, another, another first down. You know, he reminds me a bit of Jerome Bettis. Yeah, that's it, a good call. It, at, yeah. the, at the same level. Sure, yeah. yeah. Yep. It's like tackling a, a, an igloo water cooler. Man, he's, he's squatty, he's yeah. round, and he yeah. is strong, man. Yeah, another Ron Dane, Heisman Trophy win another one as he takes a breather. Very patient. Yep. Set up his blockers right there, got in behind them, and I thought it was great with, with co talking to Coach Foster Cartersville, the hidden yardage. Mm -hmm. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, he gets four, he yeah. gets seven. Yeah. yeah. Love that comparison. You make well, and the thing is, it's not just the first hit he can get away from, it's the second, second hit he hit. gets. Yeah. Now you're in the backfield against guys you've got a 40, 50 pound advantage on, to your point. McCall on the carry there for the short three yard game brings up second down. And the handoff going right side now. Good job on the defense. Make that stop. It's Tyrese Hansley with the running with the run. And brings up a third down. One more look at that. Yeah, good job here. Basically set the edge, not letting that stiff arm tackle there. And that's that's uh, Roderick McQuarrie, who plays both ways, tailback and corner. Man, he is physical. We've got some studs on both sides of the ball in this game. Third down for Coffee. 22 offers for number zero mm. for a reason. Hansley with a handoff to Hansley. And he goes nowhere. Well, Terrell, I'm on the shirts to greet him. Yeah, they had a physical practice this week. They made no bones about it. Creekside understood this game was going to be played in a phone booth for them. It's yeah. not going to be, ain't going to be no seven on seven yeah. uh, stuff around here. <laughs> You're going to line up and they're going to run right at you. And Coach Dixon and those guys got after it in preparation for this game, especially up front. So fourth down now. Hansley rolling out as they're going to go for it. No kick. Complete. Great job by Anthony Polk on the catch for the first down for the Trojans from Coffee. Look at the senior corner and wide receiver. Paul committed to Charleston Southern. Mm. And man, you want to talk about bonus. If coffee starts moving the chains through the air, yeah. that's a good sign yeah. for them. And they did that with Brown on the sideline. He was taking a breather. You see Paul's numbers averages more than 10 yards per catch. He got 12 on that one. First down. Brown back in the game and he stopped this time before he could get ahead of steam. No gain and so it'll bring up a second down. For coffee. See Creekside with big. Just so happened to have big Bam Williams. He's 6'4", 325, and Makai Barrow, 6'6", 6'5", 380-ish. 
give a biscuit or two? I mean, <laughs> yeah, those are high school kids now. <laughs> you see coffee and just what Rusty was talking about. Uh, most of their yards coming on the ground. 95 out of 107 have been on the ground. Robinson in motion. Hensley going for the pylon and the touchdown. 21 yards on the keeper from Maurice Hensley. He ran to the tunnel. <laughs> That's why I put up the Forrest Gump sign. Stop. Yes. <laughs> Just a straight quarterback power sweep right here. And he gets the edge and nobody's there. And Larry, this sideline erupted. Yeah. There is some juice on this sideline right now for coffee, and they didn't disguise it. Not at all. But what a good read by Hansley, veteran. He's got his guy behind him for the pitch. He saw the seam, took it, yep. into the for the house. Extra point is good, and Coffee 14 and 0 on the season, drawing first blood here in the 5A title game. Just unable to get there. Sneaky speed, man. Sneaky speed. Take a look at the scoring drive brought to you by the Governor's Red Ribbon campaign. Eight plays, 65 yards, 331 is what it took. Again, the bulk of it on the ground. But Rusty, I think, as you were talking about in the pregame and talking to the coaches here leading into this, this is the this is the kind of game, the kind of offense that Coffee wants to run. Just drill it, drill it, and then you got some speed guys to finish it off if you have to. And you see Brown already over there, already over there stretching and getting his Gatorade in. <laughs> hey, look at it. He's good. He's good. I, yeah. He was with, he's the only person I know is wishing we were playing outside today. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's upset we're in the bins. Right. He doesn't mind at all. <laughs> Kickoff is in the end zone, so the automatic touchback brings it out to the 20, first and 10, and that's where Creekside will take over from there. Let's take a look at the keys to the game for Creekside's offense, brought to you by Breda Pest Management, official pest control of high school football. They want to get first downs. They feel like they got an advantage a little bit with their offensive line versus the coffee defensive line. Another, another big group of guys there. They want to move the chains. Simple for coffee. They're going to play basketball. What I mean, it's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. They played man-to-man -man all year, and they're not changing today, and they know their defensive backs have got a challenge. Those are the keys to the game. 3.50 to go in the first quarter. 5A championship game here in downtown Atlanta. By the way, Hansley on that last scoring drive completed his only pass and then rushed 21 yards timeout. on his only run. Coffee. That's their first yes. card. Coffee calls a timeout. They don't like what they see. Yeah, it's definitely a formation they weren't ready for yeah. or didn't like the way their kids lined up. But you're going to watch. They're going to play press man. Just like you watching this building on Sundays. Yeah, yeah. When you see A.J. Terrell and those guys impressed, yeah. man. Yeah. Coffee's going to be right there, and they're going to jam you trying to get off the ball. And I'm sure the Creekside's going to take some shots, especially early. Special game this one of the entire week. It's the only championship match that we have that pits the number one ranked team against the number two ranked team. Coffee 14 and 0, Creekside 13 and 1. Look at Vincent Berry, quarterback. He's got offers from Norfolk State, North Alabama, and Alabama State, 6'3", 185. And here they go again with this. See if they, if they motion out of this, five wide. Good-looking prospect. We saw this to open their first series, and they started this way, brought a couple of guys in motion. Let's see if they do the same. Yep, there he goes. It's Terrell back to the left. Similar setup. Fumbled snap by Berry. And that cost it. It took advantage. See, Paul, we talked about him in the first, the open. Number 25, getting off a block, getting upfield, bad snap. We talked about Coffee handling the early pressure. Right now, it looks like Creekside has got to handle this initial kind of energy from this building. Already down seven to nothing. A couple of a bad snap. Got to gather himself and get going. Three yard loss there on the bobbled snap. He said now they're playing behind the chains. Need to get something going here. Terrell in motion. The handoff to him. He's got a seam and he's got some speed and he's got a first down. How about Travis Terrell? 17 yards and first down for the Seminoles. You want to talk about Jets? 
that's what that is because there was a little bitty hole and next thing you know he's moving the chains. And that's what keeps you up at night if you're a DC for coffee. How do we contain this guy? Explosive seven and a half yards per carry. Mm -hmm. And then he's a lockdown corner. Coach Dixon said hey he's the best player in 5A and there's nobody else like him. And in motion. Just a host of white shirts on that first down attempt as we take a look at the starting lineup for coffee. Brought to you by Regents. Get back in the game with Regents Bank. Hawk, Iverson, Gifford, and Lorenzo Harvey up front. Smith, Williams, and Carter, the backers. And we go to the defensive secondary. It's Anthony Hawk, Johnson, Edwards, Simpkins, and Jaden Hancock, the junior. Five yard pickup there. Gary with the handoff to Roderick McCrary. And again, a number we've already called a number of times here, Rusty. Nice effort there. Yeah, you look at him 1,900 yards rushing on the season and 13 touchdowns. Good job there. Bouncing out. Just gets enough to make it third and one. Good job there on the focus. That handoff came up at his face mask, and yep. he was able to corral that and still get good, good yards. Close to a first down. Third and one now. 90 seconds to go in the first quarter. Creekside. McCrary into Trojans territory for the first down. How about that, Roger McCrary? I tell you what, both teams are running the football right at each other. And both offensive lines right now are opening up some holes and letting these guys get on the second level and move the chains. We look at his numbers there, like he said, almost 2,000 yards coming in. 13 times he's rushed for 100 yards in this campaign, 2023. Barry looking to go deep. He's got a man, and he overthrows him. Trying to get the ball in the hands of Shane Kelly. Is their deep threat. That's twice now. He's trying to get it to Kelly, who broke out, had you know one-on-one -on -one coverage, just a man on him. And overthrew him. They're gonna they're gonna try that. Yeah. They know it's one on one. Our athlete versus yours. You're gonna have to hit one or two of those if you want coffee to come out of that. And you see coffee right back to the line. No space. Seventh play of this series. Barry handing off to McCrary. Short game before he's brought down by Jatavius Williams, the Mike linebacker. One more look at it. Third down coming up. Run a little counter, pull the guard and tackle backside, but Jatavius Williams, middle linebacker, does exactly what he's supposed to do. He scrapes underneath and closes down and makes that tackle for a gain of one. Bring up a pretty big third and nine here late. In the, crazy it sounds late in the first quarter. Like, where'd it go? <laughs> what happened? It's been pretty quick. A lot of runs, not a lot of yep. stoppages, right? Yep. Big play here. Play clock down to six. Barry, quick, out to Kelly. Barry's got him, first down. And a great job there defensively by Tariq Edwards to keep it from becoming even more. Man, I love the call right there. Two guys, two guys clear out. He runs a little underneath. Knowing that Coffee is going to be man to man. 13 yards on the pickup there and the pitch and catch and that brings us to the end of the first quarter. It's been exciting. Both teams kind of feeling each other out here in this battle of titans in the class of 5A here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. One score on the board. It was the quarterback, Maurice Hansley, running to the pylon and then some coffee on top. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Only in Cartersville, Bartow. Three Smithsonian affiliated museums, Barnsley Resort, and an authentic downtown full of unique restaurants and shops. The perfect destination for a memorable staycation. Only in Cartersville, Bartow. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses 
happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. All right, what do you think, Jasper? Honestly, I think that polyester shirt's affecting your game. What? I think cotton would have been a better choice. Cotton? Yeah, it's come a long way, you know. Nowadays, cotton breathes and makes moisture great. Plus, buying cotton means supporting Georgia farmers. I think that's wonderful. Okay, sure, but what do you think about the putt? Oh, guess really hadn't thought about it. This is my family. Everyone on my team knows that we're going to fight, we're going to be relentless, we're going to be aggressive, and we're going to be determined to get a great result. Mabra Law. Right back here in downtown Atlanta for the Class 5A Championship. We're about to begin the second quarter here. Larry Smith, Rusty Mansell, Nikki Noto Palmer, and the entire team here. Georgia Public Broadcasting thrilled to bring this these moments to you every single year. It is a true thrill for us. Total yards here, not much of a surprise, Rusty, that uh, coffee has done very, very well. Creekside trying to catch up when it comes down to the numbers. Yeah, got to move the chains a little bit, get some first downs. So far, coffee with a couple of quarterback keepers for some explosive plays up 7 0. Creekside now continuing a 57 yard drive so far, began at the 20, at the 350 mark. Burning some clock as well. Trying to tie the game here at seven. Vincent Berry, the quarterback, looking to go deep. And oh, almost picked off. Oh, Edwards had his hands on it. Let it go right through. Man, he missed a wide open touchdown, too. And to number 80 going across the middle on a post route. Gonna watch 80 come to the middle of your screen here. He's just, he's got his eyes locked in. Never, never went through his progression there and got away with one. But I tell you this, Creekside's gonna come back because to come back at some point because Dwayne Gary was running wide open, number 80. And you see the, the fish the wide receiver coach on the sideline tell him, hey, we saw it. He yeah. saw it. Yeah. Because he was wide open and, for six. And to your point, you saw him run through and no white jersey running with him. No. That's how open yes. he was. Yes. <laughs> Second down play, and this went nowhere fast. McCrary swallowed up by a host of Trojans. Yeah, look at the play before, and Barry, Barry was locked in on that receiver, so he's going to have to go through his progressions. They just kind of run. Good job getting up the yeah. field right there. Coffee was ready for that. Corey Blair is up there on the edge. Didn't, didn't get the block. Loss of two, so third and 12 now. They've got to get down to about the 23 for a first down to keep this drive alive. Opening minute of the second quarter. Barry going deep again. He's got a man there, but again, he overthrows him. And they're taking, Rusty taking those shots, just but the timing's just not there on I'll these. I'll tell you right now, there's, it's not open. Yeah. But I, I understand the philosophy. You got to do that. Yeah. You got to take these one on one shots. But right now, man, this coffee secondary. Great job. Look at him looking at the ball the whole time in phase, using the sideline to help him. Ball's overthrown. Great job on the deep ball. So fourth and 12, 12th play of the drive here for the Seminoles. See if they come back to this crossing route they just missed. Barry once again and again overthrows his receiver trying to get the ball to Dylan Vickerson. And they'll turn over on downs. You know, to your point, I know they're trying to take the top off. But didn't that leave that middle open, which we saw earlier? Kelly got that pass and made some good positive yards on it. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to man you up on the outside, you got to win some of those seam routes, some, yeah. of those, some of those routes, and they'll make some adjustments. This, not, this ain't their first one, but yeah. early on, it's pretty clear. Creek, Creekside wants to take some shots, and Coffee's look, Coffee said it. We're going to play man-to-man. -man. So the ball at the 34-yard line on the switch. After getting to the 33-yard line, Barry then went 0 for 3 passing. And they turn the ball over. First and 10, and we've got a flag, a whistle. And 
let's see if they've got some motion on the offense. Prior to the snap, snap infraction, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Thank and you. That, and that and that really puts you in the hole if you're coffee because you don't want to play behind the chains being a primary running offense. Brings up first and 15 now. Brown trying to find something out there and play his whistle dead. Be careful of that. We saw that in the last game. Play was whistled dead. They kept playing and wound up being a penalty. Yeah. So it's good job. Careful of that. But I hate, look, they're happy they slot they happy they stopped Brown. That's the thing. That's that's joy. <laughs> see, yeah, you see McQuarrie, the other twin, one and zero. Yeah. Just showing they run counter, pull a guard and a tackle. But McQuarrie does what you're supposed to do at defensive back. You have got to set the edge against a run, and that's exactly what he did. Second and 17, quick clip there to McCall. He's hit and still on his feet. And he's got some room. McCall past midfield. Oh, what a run by Pat McCall. First down, Coffee. 31 yards. How did he get away from that? I thought Creekside had the play done. And somehow, look, they're on him here. Two players have him. Hand to the ground. Great balance. And he is off to the races. Wow, what a play. That's incredible. Now in Creekside territory on first down. Short game there brings up second down. Let's go down to Nikki Noto Palmer. Guys, what that that play you just witnessed is exactly the tempo that Coffee likes. Coach Co told us this week the thing I learned when I got here in last season is I didn't think we were fast enough, and I'm going to make all y'all run track unless you're a lineman. And they implemented plyometrics. He said we ran less as far as conditioning than a year before, but our offensive coordinator really helped us with tempo at practice. He goes, we don't run gassers after practice. There's not time to rest during practice. If they practice fast, we're not going to be out there forever. We're going to utilize our time. He also said, I don't try to kill them in the summer. I just want our kids to be kids and I don't want the coaches getting burnt out. He said practice is what gets our kids in shape and you also saw the secondary out there just flying to the ball. They're speedy guys. Yeah they are. Nikki thanks so much. Good look there at Coach Co. Good look there at Mr. Brown. Third and five coming up here. Right up the middle. Brown. You can't bring him down with just an arm tackle and a handful of jersey. That ain't happening. <laughs> I'm telling you man. If you get four quarters of that. Yeah. Look at him just run through the floor to commit right there. Run through the arm tack of the big yeah. man and, and move the chains. Got to let that man breathe. Yeah. Seven yard pickup there brings up first down and another flag. We've got false start again. So both teams having a little bit of issue getting settled Starting in. Snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. I if he's cramping. He took a shot in the yeah. ribs. A little bit of pain there, it appears. Yep. yep. He gets that worked out and he comes back. Hansley overthrows his intended receiver trying to get it to Brady Shook the tight end. And nothing doing there. Brings up second down and 15. And this is not in Coffee's wheelhouse here. You get into first and 15, second 15 now and Creekside. This is exactly how they want coffee to have to attack them is second and 15. They want to run 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 and their star runner right now is on the bench dealing with an issue. Hansley the pinch gets it to McCall. Well played by the Creekside defense there to limit him to next to nothing brings up third and long. Yeah, they want them to run east west all day. They run a little speed option. Go take the quarterback, and then two guys are going to take the pitch back. Perfect. 
A shot by Lavelle and number one Ricky McCrary on the stop. Coffee and what they want to do again. Rusty's talked about it. 18 rushes. No surprise. Three there. pass plays. Yeah. Got one on one at the bottom. Hands are to throw a little bit behind this man, and that allowed the defender to catch up. Nice job to close quickly by Travis Terrell. And limit them to minimal yardage, and they'll bring up fourth and long now. He gained about five on the play. Fourth down at eight coming up. Man, be careful. That ball was in the air a long time. He had to, he had to throw that ball a long way. We saw DeMello Jones take one of the house 98 right. yards the other night. <laughs> You leave one in the air for a little while, one of these elite corners, uh, and we'll be kicking an extra point. That was an electric play, and boy, it really changed the tempo of that game. Sure did. Class one, division two championship. Melo Jones out of Georgia. Fourth and eight now. Hansley going up top. Ah, touchdown! Right in the hands of break hole, 27 yards. Who says we can only run the ball? What a throw by Hansley, and I mean on the money. Wow. Watch him drop this over two defenders. And right into his hands. <laughs> I don't think they thought that was coming, man. Yeah. And you turn around, and that ball's in there. Yeah. What a throw. What a call by Coffey. Leaving nothing in the playbook at the state championship. Kick is up and good. Yeah, he shows the run just enough to get their eye. Watch him, watch him like he's gonna run. Max protect, one man route. Nicely done. 14 nothing. Coffee. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Cigna Healthcare. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Georgia. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the GHSA. Over here. So on that last drive, Coffey's running back Fred Brown, he, he kind of got kicked in the, the right side of his rib, if you will, and he was breathing pretty heavily. I spoke to the trainer. She said she thinks he's fine. He just got the wind knocked out of him. But let me tell you something, though. That's a guy right there that he's not going to go down easily. So it's definitely something we're going to keep an eye out for on that right side of his rib cage tonight. Nick, a good report. Yeah, it's going to take a lot to bring him yeah, down. Yeah, big man is not out. <laughs> no. That jersey right there, if that jersey could talk, <laughs> it'd be a 30 for 30. That's right, it sure would. And by the way, we're just, we're not even halfway through the second quarter. Look at the, look at the beating the jerseys are. Oh, dude, taking. that jersey, that jersey. <laughs> they got their money's worth at zero. Yeah, quite a play right there. By the way, Hansley on that drive, two for three, passing for 33 yards and the touchdown. And now it's Coffee, the 14 nothing lead. Careful here, you got to cover. Perry, he's got some speed. Finds a seam out to the 30. Nice recovery, nice return, I should say, by, by Roderick McCreary. 25 yards on that return. 
see what Creekside does here. See if they try to get back into the running game. They had a little bit of success with McQuarrie inside the tackles, Travis Terrell inside the tackles. Let's see if they go back to what they've done. You see Coach Francis said their offensive coordinator. Let's see if they, they get back to what they're doing and try to run the football downhill a little bit. Down two touchdowns. Yeah, look at Coach Dixon there. He said calling something up here. And you get that touchdown up on a fourth down play with their star player Brown on the bench. So that's got to sting just a bit if you're the Seminoles. First and 10 now from the 29. Hand off to Terrell. On a white shirt. It's nothing doing there. No game. Brings up second and 10 now for this Creekside team that is, you know, Caught a bit of thorn in the side of, of coffee of the Trojans that reached the quarterfinals seven of the last eight years. The one time they lost was to Creekside two years ago in the first round. Yeah, this defense for coffee all year has barely given up anything at all. Not 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 a field goal, nothing. <laughs> Hard to get points. They've been stingy tonight. And there it is again. My goodness. That coffee defense. Algie Pauk, one of the names that Rusty, you pointed out at the top, man to watch, and he was a man on that play. Yeah, you look at his defensive end right there. Engage, get off the block, and make the tackle. Well, that's just good technique. Look at him keep his head up. Yeah, he's, like he said, yeah. Did what he supposed to? He squeezed the hole and then got right back out yep. and helped on the tackle. Yep. Great focus there. Another good looking player for Coffee. Loss of one, and now third and 11. Barry is going to keep it. Nice job closing there by Isaiah Johnson, the defensive back. And it's going to force a fourth down and a punt by Creekside. Yeah, I love what Coffey did right there. They brought four and had a spy in case he busted contain. And when he got to the line of scrimmage, they wasted no time getting to him for a short game. Now brings up fourth and seven. Your creek side right now. Boy, you've really. Yeah, they keep staying. They're, they're going empty set a lot. Yeah. A lot of shotgun. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. And they don't try to get back to the running game. Had some success for that, especially yeah. with McQuarrie. And you give a chance again for your defense to come through. And you've got when well, you're six yards back every time. Fair catch there at the 33 yard line by Tariq Edwards. 35 yards in the punt with no return. So 425 to go right now and everything going coffee's way. We're watching to see if Brown's back in He's putting his helmet on. Make sure you yeah, get him over yeah, the braids yeah, yeah. tight tighten that yeah. tighten that chin strap. We had some helmets come off earlier. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I had zero. I love how man's got a hand warmer on his back like he needs a hand <laughs> like he needs a hand right. warmer. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the last thing my man needs. But as much as he runs yeah. you can wear what you want. That's right. And as big as you are, yeah, whatever man. you uh, whatever yeah. you want. Yep, yep. He gets the handoff here at first down. Right back at it. Thirteenth carry of this game already for Fred Brown. And he gets a couple of yards. Second out and eight coming up. Both teams I talked about about coffee said, look, the guy gets better as the game goes on. Yeah. Don't 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 start sleeping. He's yeah. looking tired. Yeah. Because we did that. Yeah. And next thing you know, he's punishing you in the third and fourth quarter. Pass out to McCall. Gains about six. It'll be third and two coming up as we wind down to about the 330 mark here Man. in the first half. James Gerard, wide receiver. Watch James Gerard here. I don't know if we're going to see it. He blocks one guy. And then he peels off to block and see him right there. Watch the wide receiver. Oh. He knocks that guy out of the way. Now look, he goes looking for somebody else. Woof. That is a great job yeah. to pick up eight yards. And that was made by that wide receiver yeah. blocking it on the edge. And they might the review this. Is under review yeah. to see if we had a catch with the receiver's knee off the ground. Yeah, they may pull this back. It looked like as we were watching there, watching the great blocking, the great awareness by him, yep. but yep. also on that, his knee might have been down before he took off once he caught the ball. Once again, replay for the first time. Love it. 
It's 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 been great. It's We've, been fantastic. And I, I know in your games as well, oh the goodness. games I've done, it's been one that um, it's it, every time worth it to get it right. That's all we want. Uh oh, yep, that's down. That looked down to me. Yeah. Mm. Yep. After review, it was determined that the receiver's knee was down at the 33-yard line on the catch. It will be third down. Referee Todd Downs, we appreciate the explanation there. Not only was it right, it was efficient. Right. Quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'll say that. I don't know about you. It has not been a terrible delay no. on these. They've, they've, they've been very quick at it, right back if to we're, play. We're in college football. We're still waiting. We are. You know what I mean? We're 10 minutes into the decision. <laughs> that's right. We're taking two Been commercial a, breaks. These guys that's have right. done a great job yeah. of getting the decision and moving on, getting it right. Just, just great job. Yep. Totally agree. So a loss of three on that pass play. Third and 11 now. Hansley whipping back across the way to Brady Shook, who's still on his feet, still going. I'll pass the 40. How about the tight end, Brady Shook? They tried to hit him before and couldn't get it to him. They connect this time. Nice catch and run, 39 yards for the tight end, Shook. This time they got a little tight end leak back to the backside. They got the blocker set up out front. Great job, great play call coming out of that. And they played against the aggression of the Creekside defense. Nice job getting it done again with not much happening from Brown who gets the carry on first down plows his way forward still on his feet never went down. Look at the <laughs> look at the, 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 the cherry jerseys the, the cranberry jerseys that are down on the ground and he was still up. <laughs> I mean just look at this guy. Just keeps driving. Look at this. Like there are four or five guys on the ground. <laughs> and he's not. <laughs> and he's not. <laughs> takes too much for him to get up, man. That's, he's that's like, right. no, dude, I'm staying up. <laughs> that's right. Y'all got to do more than that to put me to the ground. <laughs> five yards in the pickup. Brown again on second down. There you go. Boy, just plows his way through to a first down. That right there mm. is what will break your heart if you're Creekside because you just about can't stop. Watch how low to the ground he gets. Yeah. And you pick up six or seven like that, that's hard to stop. Stoppage of play on the field. Charge timeout, Creekside. I'm okay. telling you right now, Charge they're taking a breather. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a timeout. That's a pace half. breather. Yeah. Yeah. Because if they go down 21 to nothing right now, they could be in trouble. And Creekside knows that. They want to rest their guys, give them like that basketball break. We got to take a quick timeout here. And we got to reset. That's right. And you've got three timeouts, 130 left. Let's do that. Like you said, you don't want to give one up here. Let's take a look at uh, at, at Coffee's resume and kind of how they got here as we uh, presented by the Georgia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. They're the Region 1 champions and making some history. First ever undefeated season. Only four region titles ever in the program history. And as we mentioned before, uh, quarterfinals are better six of the last seven years. They did reach the finals back in 2017. But again, Rusty, they are here looking for their first ever state championship. I'm telling you right now, just like I said about Perry last night, if they win the state championship, there will be a lot of people watch the sun come up tomorrow in Douglas, yeah. Georgia. I yeah. can guarantee yeah. you that. First <laughs> ever one, no question if they can finish this game off. And another first, ranked number one in the state for the first time. So what a job. That Coach Poe has done five times state champion down the state of Florida before he came up here and already putting his stamp on this program very early on. First and ten now. That was Robinson in motion. Keeper for Hansley goes around the side. Everyone watching Brown. Nice job there by Zarian Jones to bring down the quarterback Hansley on the keeper. Brings up second down. Man, they just get you thinking, here comes Brown. Here comes Brown. Here comes Brown. And next thing you know, they hit you with a quarterback keeper. And Hansley moves the chains. Quick, quick snap now. Here's Brown on second down. Pushes his whole man down, trying to block for him. <laughs> Not much there for Brown, but he pops right back up again. And a timeout again, time this out. time. Coffee. Coffee that is calling second it. Second charge timeout of the half. And they'll have 
they'll have one left so we talked about uh, coffee and their resume let's look on the other side now and Creekside presented by Georgia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities we talked about 10 years ago tonight and the Georgia that, Dome and that team that was amazing they Ooh. beat Tucker in that uh, championship so this just their second ever finals appearance and we talked about again they've won four of the last six region titles uh, a lot of quarter, a lot of players coming out of this program Eric Berry the longtime uh, Kansas City Chiefs star is one of the his, many his alums twin, here. his twin brothers yeah Evan yeah. and Elliot yeah that, came both, out of that. that yep. both were on that 2013 yep. team he was already gone at that point to the Chiefs but the twins, yeah, Evan and Elliott uh, both went to Tennessee, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of players. Coach Dixon, he's done a great job. Yeah. Tremendous job there. In that game, they had a running back that uh, went on to Purdue. Uh, was the star of that game that carried them past Tucker on that night. I just remember seeing them in Jefferson run track, yeah. and I knew why they won the state championship. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow. You can see the play selection right here. Got him. Completed to McCall. He's inside the 10 and he's down. Ball goes out of bounds, but he's already down. They'll stop the clock there to move the chains. And it's a first and goal. And Coffee knocking on the door again, trying to get another score. And boy, how devastating would that be right before halftime? Man, great play action fake there. Got him to bite just enough. And they sneak Patrick McCall right out into the flat. And he hits him for a big game. Brown working his way in. Looks like he's going to be just short. Of course, the fans from Coffee, <laughs> they think he got in, but I think that's the right call. Right on the doorstep. And this time it's Creekside calling a timeout. Trying to save some clock. Also, probably want to give him the time. on the field is that the runner was short of the goal line. The previous play is under review. So they will review it. This is what it's here for. Look at it up top. Let's see if his knee is down here. He's on top of a defender. So his the ball kind of snuck forward, but I believe his knee was already down. We'll see if we're right. You know, we saw this yesterday in the Class 2A championship. Rock Mart fell at triple overtime to Pierce County, but they called the play, they called the runner short. After they reviewed it, they saw on the backside that actually he did that, that looks put the ball over. That looks close there. I don't know where if you got a view of his knee. Of his other the other side of it. Yes. Yeah. That might be the only thing, but that looks close. Because he is laying on a, on, on, defender, on a defender, and yeah. then he is the ball moves up. You're right. I can tell you this. If it's not a touchdown, zero's getting the ball again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a safe bet. You don't have to. <laughs> Just because they know it's coming don't mean you can stop it. It's zeros right. getting the ball on the on the inch line. He's got a little smile. Look, he's checking himself out on the big screen. Gives yep. a little wink. Yep. <laughs> he's good. He is as advertised. After review, it is determined that the runner was laying on the defender and did break the goal line. It is a touchdown. There you go. Yep. And there it is. Touchdown coffee, Fred Brown. Yeah, watch the last push right here. See if his knee, but you're going to see sevens underneath him. He's still up. Look at his knees. He's still up. He's going for as a touchdown. Yeah. Well, to your point, great call. his leg is laying on top of the defender's yes. leg, so yep. therefore his knee wasn't down. Yeah, great call. And this is why we have replay. Great effort. Fred Brown, you see his numbers early on right here. And he, as Rusty said, he's just getting started. Copy in for the extra try. Up and good. 21 nothing. the Trojans. Boy, what a performance here in the first half. Tell you something, man. They got all the momentum. They got a huge side behind them. And right now, Larry, they're taking it to Creekside up front. Yeah. And yeah. That's just the bottom line. Yeah. They're. 
they've been in control, to your point, all, all, all the way through. Um, and a good mix, you know. Yes. Brown gets a touchdown, but let's not forget on that drive, Hansley, three of three passing for 44 yards. So, again, they don't throw a lot, but boy, when they do, it's a it's a quick strike and it's really keeping the Seminoles off balance. <laughs> Kelly on the catch there, or the, on the return, and then he gets pummeled and slow to get up. Chris Reed. A great job. Now this, how about the scoring drives for Coffee? 65 yards, 65 yards, 66 yards. My goodness. They've done exactly what they've wanted to do here in this first half. And boy, that's a the way they're playing right now, it's a that's a commanding 21 point lead. A lot of football left. Oh, well, let's, you know, let's, let's not crease you know, high, yeah. high. It can, They can score with anybody. Yeah, yeah. You've got time. But, um, but certainly, I have been impressed with yeah. Coffee on defense. Yeah. They, 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 Creekside has got little to nothing. They've had success running. I'm, I'm interested coming out of the second half yeah. if they say, listen, we got to settle down. We got to make our drives count. We got to be able to run the football. Yeah, yeah. Timeout. Creekside. That's their second charge, Tom, out of the half. Creekside's passing numbers, I, I think just the one completion, I think, to, to Kelly, and that was the one that was underneath, to your point, I think. Yep. You know, and I, you tell me what you think. My opinion, I'm just a guy just watching a game. My thought is, of the passing, let's try to take the top off. Correct. And let's go more as we talk more underneath. Give maybe me something some, here. Maybe some rub routes, yeah. things like that. Let's get these guys off yeah. our receivers yep. a little bit. Yep. And, and listen, it's 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 kind of that football mentality guy. You're going to play me man to man. We're going to take some shots. Right. It didn't work. Right. So let's make an adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. Get get the ball in the hands of your speed guys in space and let stack them em. let them do something. So get yeah. release, get yep. some stacks and things yep. like that. Get Travis Terrell off the line of scrimmage. Yep. yep. Get Barry some throws. Get him in a groove a yeah. little bit. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. All right, so first and 10 from the 11, 34 seconds. That's Kelly in motion to the left. Barry, can he get it, something to him? And there you go. Kelly, first down and more. Still on his feet. Nice job, out of bounds. But that kind of play, just That's give, exactly me, right. give me something short, yep. 10 yards, see what he can do after the catch. Yep. And he makes some positive yards. A little curl route, the lead there. And yep. Just coming back to the ball, able to make a guy miss. Get out of bounds, stop the clock, and move the chains. 22 yards in the pickup. That's their biggest pass play of the night. Both completions to Kelly. Barry again, going deep. Nice catch there. Good job by Dylan Vickerson to hang on as the defender was given the shove from back and another first down. Clock stops while they move the chains out to the 44-yard line. Creekside with one timeout remaining. Going up top again. It's Vickerson again, and it's a catch again. So like we're talking about. That's three in a row at Hancock. Yep. Three in a row. So so what do they find here? Number five. Is this the guy that we're gonna try to we're gonna try to go at? Good job looking it off and coming back to your receiver. Great throw and catch. Man, look at that body ball control. Getting your feet down. But that's three in a row at number five for coffee. Down to eight seconds now. Creekside trying to get on the board before halftime. Barry going deep. He's got a man there, but nice job of defensively. <laughs> As Anthony Ponk was waiting on him. <laughs> put the, he put the seatbelt on, put the clamp down. That's right. <laughs> Would the play clock operator please reset the game clock to one second, please? Okay. So the clock here in the stadium is reading zero. Replay right there. That is perfect play on the ball, man. That was. Boy, he was there waiting on it. Yeah, took his he, time. He saw it the whole time. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? He's not lost in space. Ball skills right there. You see it. Patient. Didn't panic. Didn't try to pick it off. Knocked the ball out of bounds. So final play of the half, barring penalty. You can see the defensive. They've got three players, three defensive backs. Beyond the 20. 
Throw up top. Trying to get it to Vickerson. The defense was there. Incomplete pass, and that's the way we end this first half. What a performance by the Coffee Trojans. Listen to this crowd right here from Douglas, Georgia. They've traveled well. Very good contingent. Thousands of fans waving their towels, seeing their team up. As we look forward to halftime now, 21 nothing. Coffee is on top, and we get ready for the coach's interview brought to you by Johnny's New York Style Pizza, your original neighborhood pizzeria. Let's go down to Nikki. Coach, coming into this game, you told your guys, go be who you are, do what you do. Defensive shutout, you're up by 21. What else does your team need to do to bring that state title home to coffee for the first time? Quit getting pre-snap penalties on offense. That's killed us a few drives. We should have more points on the board. Uh, defense, you know, we've, we've been a little bit, but we didn't break, made some plays. That's why we don't play a lot of zone right there. Uh, that's why we get in people's face and play. But I couldn't ask them to play any harder. They're playing their guts out. Uh, our crowd's making a difference. And, uh, but we got a long way to go. They're a good football team. They were down by 14 last week and came back and won. Aside from penalties slowing you down, I mean, it's also kind of stop and go with the tempo there with the media timeouts and, and everything else that this game brings for you. How do you think they're handling that? Good. I mean, we practice, We actually practice that. You know, we had a few extra days, and so we built that in. It's a little frustrating at times. But I, the officials are doing a great job with it. You know, they're waiting until we get done with drives and stuff. So um, not used to the instant replay, I'll be honest. But uh, we just got to keep playing. Coach, how many fans do you think you got here tonight? There's a lot up there. I don't know if there's anybody left in Coffee County, but I'm, I'm sure appreciative of them. I'm glad they're here. All right, Coach. Good luck in the second Thank half. You. And coming up, we're going to have our Football Fridays in Georgia halftime show coming up with Hannah and John. You'll want to keep it right here on GPB. We've got more football, more guests coming up. We'll see you here in just a bit. The only in Cartersville, Bartow. Three Smithsonian affiliated museums, Barnsley Resort, and an authentic downtown full of unique restaurants and shops. The perfect destination for a memorable staycation, only in Cartersville, Bartow. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug free lifestyle at GARedRibbon.com. Four participating Georgia Electric membership cooperatives congratulate all of the winners on the Georgia High School Association Cooperative Spirit Sportsmanship Award for 2023 and 2024. This award honors schools that exhibit exemplary sportsmanship during competitive events. The participating Georgia Electric membership cooperatives congratulate all of the winners for this season's award.
Welcome into the Football Fridays in Georgia Halftime Show presented by Regions. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. That's John Nelson. I'm Hannah Gooden. We are live from Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the 2023 GHSA Boys and Girls Championships. Here we are at the break of the 5A matchup between Coffee and Creekside. John, let's get everybody caught up on what has happened so far in the game. This is the only game of the week between a number one and number two seated teams. And this is Georgia EMC scoreboard. Georgia's EMC is so much more than electricity. And Coffee has shown so much more than the running game with Fred Brown. They've gotten scores through the air. It's been a balanced attack for Coffee. They have clamped down on Creekside, one of the more prolific offenses in 5A, but they've got that goose egg on the scoreboard after the first two quarters. Right after this game is finished, we have our final game of the three-day marathon. It's the 7A matchup between Walton and Milton, two teams that are only 11 and a half miles apart. We have Milton head coach Ben Reeves. We have Walton head coach Daniel Bruner. Coach Bruner, since you're closest to me, we'll go with you first. You are looking for the Raiders' first ever state title. What has this day been like? A, like a normal day for you, maybe since we're so close, but what has this whole feeling and the whole season been like? It's special. You know, we've got a great community, um, great school, great system, and uh, just blessed to be in the seat I'm in right now. And we've been talking about playing for a state championship and winning one for the last seven years and that's ultimately our our team performance goal and uh, we're sitting right here with that opportunity and that's uh, everything you could ask for so we've been trying to enjoy the process this whole last week and a half and uh, take a little bit of time to enjoy it but uh, it's been great it really has the kids have been having fun and I uh, hope they get on the field and have some fun tonight so you haven't lost a game since late September right. you got a bye week to think about that loss you go in after the bye week three and two you've run the table since what's been the key since then uh, just the kids continuing to trust the coaches, you know, trust our process and get better each day. Not necessarily, uh, you know, for that week's game, that Friday's game, but, you know, for November and December and just kind of having that futuristic mindset of what we're truly working towards. And the kids bought into that. They worked and, um, you know, they're, they're reaping the benefits of that right now. So we've seen both of your teams twice on GPB. So you're used to the TV, you're used to the lights. What's been your message to the team this week to maybe calm them down from all the glory of the Benz? Fortunately for us, we did this game one against Grayson, uh, <laughs> yeah. 7 p.m. kickoff, mm -hmm. Corky Kell, which That's always right. runs late. So yeah. we're used to sitting around waiting. We're used to playing in this building. This will be our seniors' fourth time playing in this building. So uh, to me, it's just another game, and that's what yeah. we've been trying to remind them of. Let's not make this bigger than it is. It's just a football game. The implications are obviously a little bit bigger, but at the end of the day, let's just go out there and be who we are and uh, trust, and that's going to get us to the finish line. Absolutely. How did these extra days of prep help you both offensively and defensively to get ready for that guy over there? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a tall task because there, there's a lot to get ready for. Um, I think they're averaging 80 points a game or something <laughs> like that. And so, it, you know, it, it, it was a lot to get ready for. But if anything, the extra days really allowed us just to kind of soak up the experience, soak up being in this game. It'd be easy to get caught up and being so excited to be playing for a state title and you look up and it's Wednesday and you got to play on Friday. So just having that extra time to just enjoy the moment, but then close the book on enjoying the moment and get into our prep, get into our work has been huge for us. This is such a unique situation where we get to sit down with both of you coaches live here. What did you see from them on film this week and how have you been preparing? Uh, they're just a team that's gotten better throughout the year. <laughs> I mean, week after week, I think they've kind of found a little bit of, a, of an identity of who they are, you know, and really throughout the playoffs, it's really shown. Um, quarterbacks played extremely well, probably the best receiving core that we've seen all year long, and that's saying a lot because we've seen some pretty good ones. Uh, and defensively, they just continue to elevate their play, you know, and get stops when they need to. And um, it should be a great ball game versus two great opponents. And uh, it's just, you know, ready for the challenge. We're excited for the challenge because, you know, you see a team like this and uh, they're in the state championship. There's not a lot of flaws in what they do. So in 30 seconds, what have you seen on tape to get you ready for them? Yeah, you know, luckily, I think we're very similar teams, you know, and so whenever you can go and, and do some best on best in practice in a way, we've been able to simulate them and who they are and who they're about just because we do have some similarities at some key positions. So, you know, just being able to do us, we've been able to emulate what we've seen on film and hopefully, uh, you know, our prep will pay off soon. Good deal. Well, there's no home field advantage. I expect this place to be packed out very soon with both of your fans. Coach Bruner, Coach Reeves, thank you so much for being here, taking the time. We really appreciate it. And good luck here in uh, just a couple hours. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks so much. Go Raiders. We have to take a quick break, but coming up next, we have the rest of the halftime show. I don't know how you top that, but we have the Make That Kid It Out First segment, the You Save It Pharmacy, Georgia Player Spotlight, and more all right after this. <laughs> Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Georgia's EMCs. So much more than electricity. 
As morning light signals the start of business, George's electric membership cooperatives are right there with you. George's EMCs are a partner in economic development, serving commercial accounts big and small that drive George's economy. From leading industries we rely on to local shops we treasure. We support operations on the ground, care around the clock, and growth through the seasons. Lighting up good business, so business is good. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. The GHSA football playoffs and championships are brought to you by Alpha Insurance. We're more than just an insurance company. We're a part of your community. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. you covered football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Cigna Healthcare Welcome back to the Regions Halftime Show. If you're just now joining us, we're at the break of Creekside Coffee. Trojans up 21 to nothing. There are five players combined on both of these teams heading to D1 colleges next season. But what about the kids that get overlooked when it comes to recruiting? Let's highlight them on Make That Kid an Offer. This week, we start with Jonesboro senior wide receiver Montez Redding. Last Friday, he broke the single game reception record with 10 catches for 301 yards and three touchdowns. He's described as having crazy athleticism and is a passionate leader. Somebody make this kid an offer. Next up is Spalding senior quarterback Kurtavian Clark. This season, he's accounted for 900 yards and 11 touchdowns through the air and 600 yards with five TDs on the ground. Last season, he notched over 17 1,500 yards passing and 14 touchdowns. He's also an All-State basketball player and runs track. And North Paulding senior athlete Jaden Clayton needs an offer. He currently averages nine yards per carry and has 240 yards with four touchdowns through four games this season. He was named the Freshman Player of the Year and MVP twice during his sophomore and junior seasons. Time to highlight another player on our Georgia player spotlight brought to you by You Save It Pharmacy. That's Jefferson running back and linebacker Sammy Brown. He will be heading to Clemson next season, and he's our Mr. Georgia football player of the year. Here's his story. Hi, I'm Tommy Sharp with You Save It Pharmacy, and I'm proud to present to you this week's You Save It Pharmacy Student Athlete of the Week. Well, he, he's, he's been blessed with a lot of talent. It's really a blessing being the third overall player in the state. Growing up in a coaching family that he's learned some of the lessons that we hope to teach. Really not trying to let things get to my head and really just trying to be a normal person. I hope you've enjoyed watching You Save It's Pharmacy Student Athlete of the Week. If you'd like to watch our full interview, please follow this link. I know Tigers fans can't wait to see him in action very soon. So congratulations, Sammy Brown, on all of your success, and thank you, You Save It Pharmacy, for another great spotlight. We have to take a quick break, but coming up next, we're going to recap the first half of this 5A matchup and much more right here on GBB. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. 
While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Kennesaw State University. At TELUS Science Museum, the magic of discovery is larger than life. With tons of interactive exhibits and stunning visuals, come experience the magic of over. TELUS. Houston, you're a go for landing, over. Oh, could you, uh, give me a, give me a soda there? Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a really nice day living in the right space. Breathing your face, got me feeling so good. In the blink of an eye, so many tomorrows can disappear. Buckle up for your future, every trip, every time. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Halftime show. It is the third and final day of the GHSA Boys and Girls Championships here on GBB Sports. The game we're in right now, the 5A game, will be the 10th team that we crowned who can take their trophy home with one more to go. We want to give you guys a look back at what's been an incredible week here at the Benz. It's been a little interesting doing things Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but it has not dampened the crowds or the support at all. Start things off with flag division one, Southeast Bullock number four in the country, shuts out North Oconee, winning that one by the score of 14 nothing. The dynasty in Brooklyn is dynastic and it continues. Next up, <laughs> after that one, it was Swainsboro and Prince Avenue Christian, a rematch of last year in Class A D1. Prince Avenue comes out again. Aaron Philo sets the record for yard in a career for a quarterback in the state of Georgia. They win it by 17. Then day one ends, great game. Bowden and Manchester, a devil of a battle. We'll go ahead and say it. Red versus blue. Bowden goes back to back, winning 28-27 over Manchester. Now let's go to day two. Greenbrier and Lithia Springs, first time ever. An Augusta area team has won in flag. They get the flag D2 title, winning 14-6 over Lithia Springs, who had won the previous two. Next on the board on game, and that this triple overtime. By the way, triple overtime, massive game there. Pierce County gets the win over Rockmark. Pierce County wins for the second time in a handful of years. 93 points on the board. The game of the weekend. Also on the board after Rock Martin Pierce, Perry and Stockbridge. Kevin Smith, our GPB Sports Coach of the Year, gets the Duke first ever championship in team history for Perry. 70 years in the making, they win it by 11. Next on the board, last one on the board, first time in over a, half, a quarter of a century, Thomas County Central over Woodward Academy by 21, 49, 28. Now let's go to Wednesday, set you up for where we are. Pope over Alatoona. Pope gets the win, they hang on at the end. To knocking away the tying conversion 14 13 Pope gets the win taking that one back to Cobb County also on the board before this one Cedar Grove two and three four in six the championship goes there Cedar Grove wins it over Savannah Christian at 49 28 in triple a which brings us to where we are here at the break coffee and Creekside coffee right now with a zero on the board for Creekside shout out by the way all of these markets outside the city of Atlanta have great local voices. Coffee is no different in the town of Douglas. Gene Wade, 84 years young, is oh, still calling John. games for your coffee Trojans. That's so nice. Fantastic stuff 
and their tailgate you is. You promised tailgate um, food on this I, show, by the way. I, I got to talk promised. to them. They didn't tell me where they were. They didn't tell me where they were. Maybe uh, I should just go well, find out where things are. Still looking for our tailgate so food. Tailgate? Thanks so much for watching the Regions Halftime Show. Only a few more shows to go for us. For John Nelson, I'm Hannah Good, and we will see you right after the 5A game ends. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Riding down the road and you're doing just fine when a car in front of you crosses over the line. They're in your space, not looking at your face. Distracted drivers all over the place. Say, we will, we will buckle up. Sing it. Say we will, we will buckle up. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. Our number one priority is protecting our players. That's why we're writing new rules for the sport and developing innovative educational tools to protect our athletes. This is player protection. This is high school football. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh I, I don't know about the TV, but uh, the burgers are ready. Yeah. Ooh, burgers, right. burgers, I want a burger. All right, I'll line up. Two. Right back inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium getting ready for the second half here. Coffee on top at 5A game, 21-0 uh, over uh, Creekside. Larry Smith and Rusty Manziel, we can't wait to bring you the final 24 minutes of this one. Right now, though, let's go down to Nikki Noto Palmer for the coach's interview brought to you by Johnny's New York Pizza. Mo, this week you told us sometimes you got to have a temperature check, right? You're not too hot, you're not too cold, but you got to throw some gasoline on the fire. How do you ignite that fire in the first half? I'm just reminding our guys the work that we put in. Um, and the score is what it is, but it's really about five or six players that we didn't line up right, that we didn't make the play that was there. That's the difference in the game right now. In the second half, we got to do a better job of taking those players and lining up correctly. How'd your players respond knowing that the job right now is to win game 15? You know, we done had adversity all year. Even in the playoffs, we done had adversity. So our kids kind of used to being in this spot. Um, we're just going to take it one play at a time and make it one play every time we get a chance to make it. I know you want to finish that chapter book on it. Yeah, that's right. we got to win 15. All right, Larry, back to you. Question about that. Uh, they they want to try to finish this thing off. But I know as we take a look at the first half uh, highlights, look, you were very impressed with how Coffee played on both sides of the ball. Defensively, Coffee set the tone up front. Creekside not able to extend drives, not to move the chains, but it started right here with Hansley, the quarterback, on that keeper. He's hurt him a couple of times. Getting your eyes on Big Fred Brown. Next thing you know, eight burns you. This was a this was the play of the half right here. Money shot for a touchdown. Great call on fourth down. Yeah, sure was. And then uh, they, the replay coming in here, Fred Brown, they didn't think was in. They did a replay and found that he was laying on the defender, so his knee never touched. 21 nothing on this. And so we go right to the uh, halftime stats presented by Breda Pest Management, the official pest management of high school football. And you can see the numbers right there. You know, it was even pretty early on, but Coffee really holding uh, the Seminoles in check. And you can see dominating the stat board as well. Yeah, I mean, look, he only had 44 yards rushing for Creekside, 48 yards passing. Um, you know, time of possession. If you look at that and that stays the same way in the second half, Coffee's going to be the state champions. I will say this when you see Coach Dixon talk, no panic. Yeah. He knows his guys have been there and done that. Yeah. They got a half to go. They're not going to be an easy knock them out. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 12 first downs uh, for Coffee. And again, like you said, they've, uh, they're going to dial something up here because this is a team that, um, as we talked before, they have had such an outstanding season all the way through. 
and so it has been. Uh, there are nowhere close to being done. <laughs> no, but th th <laughs> this, this team right here, a lot of seniors, a lot of kids have been playing together a long time. They've been all over. They've been coast to coast. They went to California to play the, the probably the number one high school team in America. That's right. Time now for the kickoff to open the second half. Brought to you by Buckle Up Georgia. Seatbelts save lives. Getting that off and running again. It was Creekside deferring uh, to the second half, and they're making it happen here. Terrell taking that kickoff and going all the way down inside the coffee 40 yard line. 45 yards on the return, and just like that, like we talked about, Coach Dixon wasn't concerned at all. There's a lot of time on the clock. You've got two full quarters to play. That's the way you want to kick this thing off if you're Creekside. Yes. Get the, we talked about him in the opening. He's the explosive playmaker, both sides. No panic. Zero panic. I yep. guarantee you it was very calm in the locker room. This is what we have to do, and what a great start for Creekside to open the second half. And like you talked about, you got the confidence knowing the only loss was to the number one team of the country Modern out in day. California, yes. right? Yes. So <laughs> you've beaten all other comers, and you've got 24 minutes to keep that streak alive. First and 10 now for Barry. He's got Terrell in motion. Barry looking to throw. Had some success there toward the end of the first half. And it's caught there by Kelly. The tip ball doesn't matter. Touchdown on the first play of the second half. 39 yards, and the Seminoles get on the board. Two plays, touchdown, Creekside. No nope. panic. Nope, nope. Zero panic. Even on a tip ball right here, good job by the coffee defender. But sometimes the play goes your way, yeah. and Creekside makes them pay. Open and drive, touchdown. Seminole say hold up on Lord those rings right now on the other <laughs> sideline. That's right. 23rd career catch. You see Kelly's numbers right there. And for the kick and up and good. And Rusty, to your point, it's just one play in. But boy, it feels like as we take another look at this uh, touchdown here, this was a, a pass play much more in control than what we saw in the opening quarter and a half. From uh, from Barry and from Creekside. Yeah, still want to you still want to lead that a little bit, but yeah. sometimes you got to get a break, man. Sometimes you got to get one of those to happen to you, and it did. It doesn't matter. It was six points. Ball just goes your way right there. What an answer! But it started with that opening kickoff return, set the momentum. You're able to call any play from that part of the field, yep. and they open up with a pass play for a, for a touchdown. Yep. Good look there at Vincent Barry. 38th touchdown on the year for that young man. So Creekside shut out in the first half, 19 seconds in. The great return, kick return by Travis Terrell. And then Barry to Kelly for the touchdown. And now they've got the momentum very quickly here to start the second half. Feels different here, doesn't it? It does. Feels a lot like, yeah. wait a minute, uh-oh. Yeah. Got, got a game on our hands right here. See how coffee answers. See the adjustment on Creekside defensively. Creekside's got the man playing. Kick is down to the 10. Take it from there. And that's Palk, Anthony Palk on the return. Let's go down to Nikki Noto Palmer. All right, so when I was talking to Mo at the half, here's what I was talking about, about writing that chapter 15, if you will. He said, this season has been like writing a book, and each week has been a chapter. He goes, I haven't even titled chapter 15, but it's simply do the job. He said, um, that was the, the chapter against Warner Robbins. He said, do everything you've got to do to do the job. You heard him at the half. He said, we got to work. We faced adversity. And it looks like, I mean, scoring in that first possession coming right out of the gate is exactly what he was hoping to do. Absolutely. Take that momentum away right away and see if you can now channel that on the defensive side. There's a Seminoles defense trying to stop coffee first and 10. Big Fred Brown gets the call. Still isn't down. There is a whistle. <laughs> Man. It's it's just every play is a battle. Yeah. Good look at Brown over 2300 yards rushing this season. And as Rusty mentioned he gets stronger as the game goes on so. Brown again with his great moves boy he's got great lateral quickness for a running back of his size. He says feed it to me feed it <laughs> feed it to me. 
Watch him make a move right here. A little jump cut. Yeah. Look at his legs, man. This deceptive lateral quickness. Yep. Um, it's what the quarters will told me. Yeah. Underrated athleticism. Third and two. Hansley on the keeper, and he gets the first down on the dive. And he knows he just missed one because they got a shoestring tackle right there. If they don't, it might be 28 to 7. That comes up a little bit campy. We'll keep an eye on that. They've hurt him with that keeper. It's a little zone read. He keeps it. Defensive end crashed. 33 crashed. And well, what happened there? Tripped over the yeah, over the turf. <laughs> over the chalk. The, the, blue, the blue line got him. That's right. <laughs> Brown again on first down. Super Just a gain of one, second down and nine. But the 13th first down for this coffee Trojans offense. Fred Brown goes right side and he's got some space. First down and then some out past the 50. And the crowd reacting to his moves in the open field. <laughs> you know, you don't see a running back a lot of times at the end seeking contact. He's trying to stay in bounds to hit somebody. Yeah. Watch this. He gives a stiff arm right here. Oh my goodness. Now watch this. No, I want some more. <laughs> I'm not done. <laughs> He could have gone out of bounds. Man, that stiff yeah. arm, he electrocuted that defender. He did. <laughs> he Brown popped getting a off of him. That's right. Brown getting a breather, as you can see here. That's a lot of running for big man. That is. You got to get him. He got to get a little bit there. But, man, you talking about somebody wanting to finish a run. He had no thoughts of going out of bounds. No, no. Who else wants some? Yeah. Smaller back, but Walter Payton-esque back in the day. He's mm. going to stiff arm you and hit you. And, I don't know if anybody's ever called Fred Brown sweetness. <laughs> don't think so. <laughs> by the way, that was 23 yards in that carry by Fred Ooh. Brown. Second down play here. Nicely done by Therese Hansley in for Brown as he gets a breather. And Coffee is finishing runs right now. Doesn't matter if it's Hansley, doesn't matter if it's Brown. They are running through contact. Physicality. Brown sitting out for two plays. Back in now for this third and one. Trojans trying to answer. Creekside touchdown pass on their first play from scrimmage of this second half. Keeper by Hansley. First down. That's their play. Yep. Third, third and short. Creekside's got to make an adjustment to that. He's just reading that in. See that in? Stay in crashed. Seven crashed. And by the time anybody else showed up, it was a first down. Yeah. Good right job there. right there. Nice, nice play. That's what you got to have more out of these interior defensive linemen. You see big Bam Williams, 6'4", 320 pounds. Look at him beat that double team. Whoa. <laughs> he said, no, sir. <laughs> Great job. Split the double team. Loss of two on the play. McCall in motion. He'll collect the throw from Hansley. Short gain there. Well defended by the Seminoles. Brings up third down and about eight. This is a big play for Creekside. You're third and seven. You can maybe get out of this thing right here. You give up a big play to Fred Brown, but it doesn't mean anything if you don't get points out of it. Big third and seven to open up the second half. The clock is running. It's already, I mean, it's, we're already down seven minutes in the third quarter. The yeah. way these teams are running the football, especially coffee, this thing ticks off pretty quick. Coffee, very successful on third downs. Yes, so Six far. Six of nine, yeah, been outstanding. Their execution. It's Brown again. Can they string it out? Nice and job. they can. What a job there by Major Lavelle to bring down Brown and force it. Got a fourth down at about seven. The first, he's going to get the first one. He's going to get this first stiff arm. But you got to have more than one. You got to be there. And that was one of the keys to the game for Creekside. Gang tackling. Got to be there. And that's a great job to force this field goal. Right 
Setting up at the 30. It's going to be a 40 yard attempt. With Jacoby Goolsby. And it's good. Nice job, the 40 yarder. Excellent play, make that Jonas Sailor, excuse me, on that 40 yarder by Sailor. And so Coffee answers with the field goal. Class 5A title on the line. Can the Seminoles answer back? Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Cigna Healthcare. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Georgia's EMCs. So much more than electricity. Every game day celebration, every championship title begins here with hours of unseen work. As part of our commitment to education, Georgia's EMCs support the young athletes who play high school sports in the communities we serve. Empowering talent with scholarships, honoring sportsmanship, saluting the game changers. When we champion the energy behind the scenes, they can step into their future and shine. Georgia's EMC's official energy provider of the GHSA. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind, live drug free, learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. Coach Coe said that the Trojans came in this week healthier than ever. He said last week was the first week that everybody was dressed out. And of course that had to help them in prepping for the title game and they were given an extra few days. He also went on to say that help at practice being able to get high quality scout teams. And also we haven't had to cross train guys as much as we did when we had certain kids out. So that's why they are turning up the gas tonight guys. And that they are. Nikki thanks so much 24 7 now so. Two offensive drives, two scores here in this second half. Let's see if the Seminoles can come back with another score and try to continue to chip into this lead. James Gerard with the kickoff. Great That's coverage there. Terrell, and then all eyes on him after that big return to open the second half. You can bet they discussed that one on the sideline. That's right. <laughs> Got to cover, kick this thing into the boundary. Let's get down. Look at Terrell. He's got nine offers. Coastal Carolina, Marshall, and Grambling among those. And got to wonder with the amount of college coaches in here, the whole sideline on just about packed with college coaches, and kind of wonder what, what could become of him after tonight. Right, right. Absolutely. First and 10 from the 15 now. Vincent Berry. Last throw was for a touchdown. The tipped ball into the hands of Kelly. Little trick play here to Terrell looking for Kelly. Incomplete, but I like the play call. I love it. Yeah. Don't leave anything in the nope. bag. The nope. state championships on the line. Your kids have played all year. I love it coming out of first down. Ball, ball was up just a little bit. You want to put a little more umph on that. It floated for a while. See how long it's in the air? Yeah. And it gave the defender time to look back, maybe to get back. He had him stacked for just a second, but I love the play call. Take yeah. a shot. Man. Yep, yep. Look at Coffee going right back to that man to man. Look at him. Barry, good protection. Looking for his man, complete Great for the first throw. down. Great Kelly throw. again. <laughs> If Creekside is going to come back, they got to complete that ball. Yeah. That's yeah. the pass they've got to complete. Watch him climb the pocket right here. Feels the pressure, eyes down the field, kind of flicks that ball. Nice completion. 15 yards on the completion there. Barry to Kelly. It's been quite a combination for them. Very even play selection. 
14 passes, 12 rushes. Barry with it outside and gets it again to Kelly. I think that's his favorite receiver. I like that. I like that comeback too. Yeah. Yeah. Over on the sideline, time and route. But again, you're but, but like we talked about, getting your guys yep. out in space, your yep. skill guys, your speed guys, give them the ball, and get and, them outside the the box, and knowing you're in man to man. Yeah. You know where your guy's gonna be because you're trusting your guy to beat him in that cut. Gain of eight on that play, second and two now. Looking to the right and through behind Kelly. Might have felt he was like held, I guess. Like a little back shoulder, yeah. maybe, and yeah. the receiver kept going. Still manageable now, third and three, third and two and a half, maybe, but they may come right back to the same route up top. Creekside still has a momentum. Down 21 nothing at halftime. Run up the middle, fumble. Recovered and all. Oh, what a bounce for two of this bounce. What a for break. Creekside. Oh my goodness. What a way to move the chains. Yeah. Bam Williams. McCrary is stripped. Yep. Good job by Bam Williams just being aware. Eyes up the field, getting on that football. More importantly, it's a first down. Might have caught the break there. Looked like his knee could have been down before he fumbled the ball. But we play on. First down for the Seminoles. Looking again for Kelly. Nice catch and run and gets uh, into coffee territory. Another first down. And so the plays we talked about in the first half, Rusty. They're making them happen. By the way, there's our rules expert right there, David Reynolds. That's the man. Yeah, he's had a long day. He did. He's uh, had a long week. He, he has. <laughs> he, he did color analyst uh, for the, uh, the 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 flag football game, girls flag football game in game one. I tell you, man, he's on it and he knows it. He does. He is very impressive. Good man. Glad to have him on the team. And the first down throw for Barry waits over. Rose was trying to hit Vickerson. Those, those guys connecting three times uh, late in the first half. Nothing there. Good look at Anthony Paul, the defensive back. He's been active. Yes. I like it, man. Yeah. <laughs> They're not hiding it. No, no. It's man versus man. My guy versus your guy. Yep. At this point, you've played 14, 15 games. We are who we are, right? Nice move here. Terrell. Love it. See how quick he saw that? That when he did see it, it cost you nine. Watch him press to the right. He sees the cutback, and he's gone. Yep. Picks up nine yards. Explosive. Third and one now. Good mix of plays. For Creeside taking their time. Can't afford any empty possessions here. Man, they've been, I didn't like it there. They no. were blitzing. Barry on the keeper ends up being brought down for no gain. Brings up fourth and one now. A lot of times on a play like that, you see that slant. You yeah. can beat your guy inside, yeah. gets position. Yeah. See what they do right here because so far on plays like this, Coffee has brought an extra guy. They're showing three down linemen. See what they do here. Very connected with Kelly three times for 34 yards in this one. Has completion for a first down here. Good play call. Yep, something quick. Beat your guy off the line of scrimmage. The ball did. Damian Henderson. Number 19. His first catch of the night brings up a first down. Now to the 32 yard line. Nearing the 330 mark here in the third quarter. Barry on the run, being chased by Williams. Complete. Hits it to Henderson again. Great play by Barry. He got flushed out of the pocket. Immediate pressure. 
And they have had problems blocking this front for coffee. But he keeps his eyes down the field. The guys coming back across the route, clearing over the middle. Hits him for a seven yard, eight yard game. Look at Vincent Berry's numbers. Much more productive in his last eight passes than he was to start. There it is. Another first down. This one to Vickerson again. Talk about that. I think that guy knows some football. See Tim Glanton, longtime coach there, Kennesaw State. Yep. Kirby Smart. Yep. Know there's some guys in the building tonight. A lot of celebrity coaches around, right? We saw Gus Miles on earlier watching uh, Elliot Colson of Cedar Grove quarterback his team to a state title. Pass intended for Vickerson. Jaden Hancock was all over him. I feel like on both sides are letting them play. Yeah. If you're not going to call it one way, let them play. Look at them. They're just both battling for the ball there on that view. Yeah. And I like it. State championship. Let these kids go at it. Yep. Been pretty consistent all night. Yeah, they have, both, they have. Both, both, both sides. Yep. I would agree. That's what you want. See Hancock's numbers. Eight passes broken up. Barry under heavy rush gets himself for the first down trying to get into the end zone and he can't but he's inside the five and a first and goal for the Seminoles. Oh, nice effort here. Yep. 15 yards on the pickup. He's got a little more juice to him. Yeah. Barry Barry's starting to get some of that get some of that it to him. You know what I mean? And Starting to try to take this game over. He's, you see the confidence now. He's running. He's hitting passes. And Creekside's coming alive on their side. Injury timeout on the field right now. That's why we've got a stoppage in play. Taking a look at Kevius Smith. The linebacker. Good to see him get up and walk off. But you talked about making those halftime adjustments. Look, Creekside's best two series uh, of this entire game have been here in That's the third right. quarter. That's right. And they also understand the clock's ticking. Yeah. Our yeah. season's ticking. Yep. How are we going to go down? Yeah. How, how are we going to be remembered? Make every possession count. And right now, Creekside's, Creekside's found a little something, and it starts with their quarterback. Yep. Get a touchdown here. All of a sudden, it's a 10-point game. You're right back into it. 12, 13, 14 minutes left. First and goal from the three. Special package in. Hand off to Terrell. Ball is loose. And for the second time in this series, uh, the Seminoles cover their own fumble. Again, bounce, ball's bouncing their way. Good hustle there. Great recovery. Another angle from the back. Second and goal to go now from the four. They lost one on that play. Vincent Berry, the quarterback. Bring in two defensive linemen in front of him. See the pistol formation, basically. Chris Reed, have some. <laughs> they tried to go heavy. You see, 95 and 74. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. No. Because penetration beats you there. Step in the hole. What a play by yeah. number six right there to slip that out. Chris Reed stepped in there. When they list you at 5'9, 210. If you're not 5'9, it oh. don't matter. <laughs> Third down play. Going into the corner. Oh, through his hands. Trying to get it to Eric Paul, the receiver. And that brings up a fourth and goal. I think you got to go for this, man. Oh, yeah. Late in the third. This ball just. Oh, man. Just right out of touch, just a little bit. See? Just out of reach. Boy. That close. Yeah. What a drive. It began back on the 15-yard line at the 647 mark. So we're 
taking up half the quarter. You got to finish this off with a touchdown. Field goal doesn't help you at this point. Missed him. Overthrows his man, trying to get it to Kelly. And that's tough. Yep, missed him right there. They had a great call. Play was open. Ball just sailed on him. Yeah. They run a clear out. Boy, it's right there. He had him, too. Yep. That was it. Expecting man, yep. two underneath receivers run a clear out. He comes right back in behind it with a little post and just missed him. So Barry, six of 10 for 43 yards on that series. Passes to Kelly, Henderson, and Vickerson, but the one he wanted, the one they needed, to Kelly right there. So on the other side, you've got Coffee deep in their own territory. They'll start first down at the six. Fred Brown. Gang tackled. Grab everything they can. <laughs> and this is coffee football here. They want to lay on you. They want, they want to give you this dose of Fred Brown. And see how bad you want some at zero That's right. in the fourth quarter. It's probably going to be in the quarter there. Yeah. I mean, the final play. Boy, it's tough for Creekside. 18 play drive. It stalled there on the incomplete pass on fourth down. As the final seconds of the third quarter tick away, 12 minutes to determining a champion. Coffee in control, but Creekside, more than one fortuitous bounce in their way. Can they keep it up and come back? The GHSA football playoffs and championships are brought to you by Alpha Insurance. We're more than just an insurance company. We're a part of your community. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered. Person too. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an oxy or perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Larry Smith, Rusty Manziel, Nikki Noto Palmer, and the Class 5 Championships. Again, Coffee, the Trojans seeking their first ever state championship. First time ever that they have been ranked number one in the state. That coach, Mike Cole, what a job he has done. Just his second season in charge of the Trojan program. One quarter left to hold on. That's right. 21-0 lead at halftime. It's now 24-7 as we start the third quarter of this 5A championship. Stay with us. We're running a little bit behind time-wise. But 7A championship is still on the way. Second and four. Who else but Fred Brown looking to hit somebody again? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, by the way, making the eating motion. Feed me uh, to the Creekside sideline. Like that's the Zeke Elliott. Keep that's feeding me. <laughs> Look, he puts the brakes on to hit somebody. <laughs> 19 yards on that pickup by Brown. He gets it again, just moving the pile. Look at that. Still going. Two big runs to open the fourth quarter by the big man, Fred Brown. Number 33, 
Gets better as the game goes on. That was a scouting report. He does. Already now his 20th career 100 yard game as he's just discarding tacklers. And that's Big Bam Williams he threw aside. <laughs> yeah, he just didn't tap his helmet. He wanted to eat two plays ago. Now, like, now I got to go to the sideline, man. I got to have just a little bit. Got to love high school football. Yeah. Outstanding. 100 yard games, 20th of his career. What a night he's having tonight. Third and two. Big play here for the Creekside defense. Got to get the ball back. Came up short on that 18 yard drive to close out the third quarter. Got to have a stop. Speed option in the boundary. Got it. And they do it. Got it. And great job. Great job there by Creekside. DJ Millfort, number 53, was in there. They've ran that play a couple of times on third down. This time, Creekside was ready for it. Quarterback keeper. Creekside had to have that stop. Yeah. Time ticking now, under 10 minutes to go, and they need three scores. So the clock becoming a factor here in this 5A championship. Mikhail Smith in the punt, gets that away. Ball's going to bounce short and take a lateral hop until it's down there by. Jairius Carter, 31 yards on the punt and no return. Creekside down. Got to get something going. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well being. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Georgia's EMCs. So much more than electricity. Back here in downtown Atlanta, Class 5A championship is underway here. 9.31 to go. Look at the coffee scoring defense. Rusty alluded to this earlier, giving up just six points per game, and they've given up seven tonight. Um, if they can hold on to that, they'll be champions. That's what you're going up. If you're Creekside's offense, that's what you're going up against is that stingy defense. You need 17 points here in nine and a half minutes. Travis Terrell motioned him outside. Vincent Berry winding up to go long. Intended receiver was Eric Paul. Just great coverage, man. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's yeah. just yeah. it's just great coverage. Yeah, I mean, watch this on the replay. Yeah. They run a little scissor concept right there, trying to catch them, confuse them, and look, great job. Yeah. Just good defense. So they got to go more than 10, 12 yard. Yeah, I think you go back to those yeah. sideline, you yep. know, the little little 10 yard out. Yep. Some curls. Don't panic yet. 
She's got to get positive yardage. Clock is stopped. There you go. Barry to Kelly. Nice well pass, defended. Close. Nice defense by Travis Adams. Right there. You know, we're seeing a lot of it's it's not just one or two guys we're calling on this coffee defense. There are a lot of they run a lot of guys in there, fresh legs, and they all could do the job. And they're sure tacklers. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? When they get there, you're going to the ground. Yep, they're wrapping you up. So an underneath pass right there, but thanks to the good defense, only a two-yard gain, and the clock now running under nine minutes. Third and eight. Barry complete nice catch Gave it by to Kelly yep forward progress first down what I like there he came right back to the quarterback on his route he didn't just stop and allow the defender to get on him he comes back to the quarterback catches the ball and then gets back north south nine yards there in the pickup and Creekside Taking a lot of time in between plays. Again, you've got to get three scores. Play clock is down to 12. Barry. Nice job to Terrell. Gets out of bounds to stop that clock at 8.13. Short gain. Gets about six. Brings up second and four for the Seminoles. Ten years ago tonight, they won their only state championship. Uh, just a few yards away from here in the former Georgia Dome. Trying to get it going. They're going to repeat history. Benson rolling out. That Benson Barry rolling out. Kelly incomplete. Wants a, wants a shove called by Johnson and it's not coming. Third and four right now. You're definitely two down territory with this clock. Yeah. I mentioned that other drive. I'm not sure if they could afford any empty uh, possessions, and that was one already. Certainly yep. can't afford another. And you need some help in your defense at the same time. Barry under pressure. Can he get it away? Low and incomplete. Trying to get it to Kelly. Brings up a fourth and four. This is a must-have play. Must-have. Got to convert yeah. right here. Got to convert right here, just about for the game. Yeah. Look at Coach Dixon. Mentioned 13 and one. Flew out to California earlier in the season to play modern day. The great football power out there. Lost 62 to nothing. But that's their only loss, and uh, they're timeout. Coffee. That's their first formation. Time out of the half. Causes coffee to cause uh, to call its first time out here yes. on the half. And we will take a time out as well here in Atlanta. Final day of competition for the GHSA football championships. We continue after this. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at GARedRibbon.org. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Twenty-four-seven coffee on top here, Class A championship. 
and the Trojans trying to finish off well you know the 15 and 0 perfect season this the schedule for today this is the third of four games if you're looking for the Milton Eagles versus the Walton Raiders hang on you've got more time to go get some snacks uh, it's still on the way but it's going to kick off a bit later than seven o'clock a couple games earlier went a little bit long right here now live action Creekside trying to mount a comeback down 21 nothing at halftime in case you're just joining us got a score at the very first play of the second half and since then it's been an uphill battle for them great play there on fourth down to keep this drive and really keep this game alive it's a uh, Barry in the hands of Damian Henderson for the catch first down 12 yard pickup Barry on this drive before that play three of six for 17 yards every drive on the play has been a pass as you might imagine another completion to Kelly he escapes the tackler and off to the races Kelly for the touchdown exactly what the doctor ordered for the Seminoles from Creekside 40 yards on the score when you play man to man and you miss a tackle it's six points. Pitch and catch. Watch this move on the sideline here. Just enough. Shimmy. Touchdown Creekside. What an answer. Had to convert on fourth and four. Two plays later. Watch him head fake to the inside. Just enough to give him that angle. And he does the rest. And you know what? Polk has given him fits tonight. So yes. <laughs> he got one back on him. Good job. <laughs> Kick is up and just does get inside the left upright so Creekside don't write him off just yet still in this game second touchdown catch by Shane Kelly the other one was on a tipped ball and he was right there to collect it run in he's got some good speed and open open space. Yeah, he took off now that yeah was a burst so 24 14 sorry you see him a lot of emotion coach tell him listen you got to calm down we need two more drives out of you it's a great answer, but you got to save a little bit, my man. Yep. You gotta, we got to we got to conserve right here. See Coach Dixon telling his guys we're not done. Seven and a half minutes, a lot of time left, but got to make a stop here. Got to have a stop. And don't think you see the motions right there. He understands how big a play that was. These kids are giving it everything they got. What a play man. He'll remember that the rest of his life regardless yep. of what happened right here but he wants a little different ending but what a play by Shane Kelly. You saw that graphic right there and what he has meant to this Creekside offense. Kick inside the 10. Pomp takes it there about the eight. Backpedal to pull that one in. Still on his feet. Finally he's brought down. And that's yeah. not going to call anything there. They could have. They did not. Dead ball. I'll tell you what, I'm, the, hats off to officials because yeah. they let them play. Yeah, they they've have. Let, they've they let have. these two teams go at it. I felt like they've, they've been fair. Yep. They have let these kids determine this outcome on the field. Yeah. And like you said, on 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 both sides. Both sides. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Let them hand check a little bit, but both teams have gotten away with it. Yep. Very well officiated game. No here, question. Here comes zero. And Fred Brown already 100 yards, looking to add to it. Seminoles bring him down. The clock will run. We got a play stoppage of play. They call timeout. timeout. Creekside. Creekside is playing for it right now. Yeah. Out of the half. They are playing for it at 7-12. They're playing for it. Yeah. Interesting, but at some point, you can't put it back on yeah. the clock. Yeah, no. And you need two scores. You got two possessions. So, you got to yeah. have two scores. Yeah. If you get the ball back and there's only four minutes left, you, it's going to be tough to get down the field twice. Look how big 58 is. <laughs> You think he's 340? <laughs> my man. <laughs> a couple years ago, maybe. <laughs> yeah. My man had seen 340 in a long, long time. Oh, no, yeah. Going to the University of Florida. You want to talk about one of those zero tech anchors? 
That's right. Three, four, fit. Makai Baru. Class 7A championship game, Walton versus Milton is coming up shortly. If you're tuning in here to the great GPP, wherever you are, glad you're with us. And that game is still ongoing. The Class 7A championship, our final champion that we will crown in these three days here in mid-December. Uh, what a joy it has been. Pleasure. Glad you're along with us. Hang with us. We've got 714 left here and then the trophy presentation. And then we will get to the Raiders and the Eagles. Brown again brought down by <laughs> by comparison little Ricky McCray McCrary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that jersey's done. Oh boy, that that's is something. Nobody's ready for football season to be over more than that jersey. That's right, exactly. <laughs> that thing's done. Look here at James Gerard. Wide receiver, third and six clock is running. See what Creekside does defensively here. Do they bring pressure or they sit back and try to keep everything in front? They got to have it stop one way or the other. Trojan trying to let the clock run. Play clock down to 10. It's Brown going for the first down and he won't make it. The Creekside defense holds. That's what they needed. And now Force they call a, a timeout. Down to punt. Yep. Yeah, punt. Uh, timeout, second one Time of the out. half. Creekside. That's Creekside's third charge. Correction. Second, Second charge time out of the half. Good job there by number 30. And big boy row right there. Dylan Blakely. Blakey steps in mm -hmm. and has to, hey, it's that time of the year right now with everything on the line. You got to step in there and you got to get one on. You got to square up Fred Brown. That's right. And that's not easy to do. That's right. <laughs> That's why they're going to get the football back because of the play at number 30. That's right. Nice job. 624 on the clock. We've seen Creekside call two of their timeouts here to preserve this clock. And so now they should get it back with 615 or so, 620, somewhere Plenty between time. there. Plenty of time. Lots of time to go down and get a couple scores. They found their offense here in the second half. And again, what looms large that uh, at the end of the third quarter they went six plus minutes to go almost 85 yards uh, down the field but they come up short on the incomplete pass on fourth down Missed it. that's that empty empty uh, possession if you could get a score there it's a much different ball game you're going for the lead now yep but that was then this is now fourth down kick coming up Smith on the punt fair catch called for at about the 38 yard line by Damian Henderson. That's where the Seminoles will take over. Chance to cut in a little further. 22 yards. 32 yards. Correction on the punt. I am sensing some good energy out of the Creekside sideline. They know, man. Side line. Yeah. They know. It's yeah. now or never. Yep. And I mean, it's now or never. For a lot of those seniors. Yeah, yeah. It's not now or never. It's now and forever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what a season for Creekside. 13 and 1. Coach Dixon. As we talked about, never panicked coming out of the locker room in the second half. His team down 21 0 at halftime. Coffee was impressive in the first half. Trying to hang on here and get their first ever state title. Vincent Berry on first down. And he's. Oh, boy. Oh, most picked off by Jaden Hancock and he knew it. Boy, he had one. Boy, he jumped that route. He was sitting on that route. It was a long throw all the way across the hash. He stared it down and Hancock oh. just misses a chance to seal it for coffee. Hit him in the wrong place. Yep. That's one of those if you win or lose they're still going to give you something on the bus on the way home. That's right. Second down now Barry. Escapes the rush. Has time. Goes into traffic. And incomplete trying to get the ball to Paul and brings up a third and ten. Because of the play went so long. You ended up with like three receivers in the same yeah, right. area. Yeah. That brought with it defenders, just no one there that could make a play on it. Basically a jump ball. Yeah. Good thing is for Creekside, clock has stopped at 602. 
four down territory the rest of the way. See if they come back to that little slant. They went quads last time, and the, I believe it was 19 on a slant. Anderson, one of his favorite targets. Nice job there by Kelly. It's just enough. 12 yards on the pickup and a first down. They stopped the clock to move the chains. They Reach. tried to run Bear, Bam Henderson across the middle, but it was picked up. And then Kelly comes in behind it. Good ball there. Yeah. Good read. Same formation. Green side need to pick up a little bit. Need two scores. Vincent Berry buys himself some time. It's okay. Smart move. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Yep. yep. It's okay. Stop the clock. Going with this, going with this formation, this quads, it's giving them free releases on these wide receivers. Not a bad play. Pick yep. up a couple yards and live for the next one. We get deeper into the night here at Mercedes Benz and Wake Release Field. The electricity growing as this game. We get closer to crowning another champion. Creekside says, hey, we're still in this. Hang on. A lot of time left. Almost five and a half to go. Second and eight. After the two yards gained on the scramble by Barry, looking to throw again. Gets away from the defender, slides down, and it'll be short of the first down. So the clock will continue to run. 520 and counting. A nice job, though, by the coffee defense, the secondary, to kind of lock down all of his options. The best job was Barry getting down. Yes, yeah. I'm telling you, coffee was about to lay the wood on yeah. him. That's right. <laughs> Great job of losing that hit. I don't know where the spot is. I don't know if they got question on it, but it's short. Seven yard pickup, so they'll go third and one. Under five minutes to go. Barry. A sidearm throw. Trying to get it to Henderson. Up fourth and one. One more look at it here. A little sidearm throw. Look, look at the pressure. Look at Paul, 25. Beat him to the inside. Forces him out of the pocket. And his guy, the rest of his guys are coming. I tell you, yeah. Paul, Paul's not the biggest dude, 25. LG Paul. But man, he comes every play strong. So another must have play for Creekside. Fourth and one. This place is loud. It is. This place is loud. And they say he made it. Travis Terrell gains about two. They needed one, and that'll be a first down for the Seminoles. Now you got to move. You got to go now. You got to go. Yeah. You don't want to put it all on an onside or nothing. Yeah. You have got to score right here. It's got to be quick. Get the play called and go. Barry trying to set his receivers. Three split on the right, two on the left. That's incomplete, trying to get it to Terrell. Clock is stopped, though, 419. Again, in case you've just tuned in, this is the Class 5A Championship. It's Coffee at 14-0, taking on that man's team. Coach Dixon, Mo Dixon, 13-1. Only one versus two game, uh, one right, number one versus number two championship game here this week. Only the 29th. This is the AJC Atlanta Journal Constitution began keeping the rankings, compiling them back in 1982. Barry from behind, he's hit. And that's a second down play with second and 10. Well, Lorenzo Harvey, another name we have not called. But boy, he comes up big in the Look clutch. Look at his hands right there. My goodness, you want to see something picture perfect? Watch him get. Watch him come off the ball and get Caleb Holmes hands off of it. The Pittsburgh commit with that pressure. What a rush by Lorenzo Harvey when his team needed him the most. Wow. Seven yard loss and now third and 17 for Vincent Berry under pressure again. Probably going to be a hole. Got a flag down. Flag is down all the way back here at the 
holding. We're going to come back to this play. I want you to watch Harvey against this left tackle. And I want you to watch his first move. Watch him get his hands off of him. Watch his slap down. Look at that. Slapped his hands right off of him. That is absolutely pitcher perfect pass rush by that defensive end. That was brilliant. It just neutralized him. Well taught, once man. You, once you do that, yeah, yeah. I don't care if you're six five. When your hands are at your waist, you're beat. That's right. That's right. So now comes the walk off. Correction. Holding against the offense. They have chosen to take the penalty. Replay, fourth down. Replay, third down, right? Yeah. Should be third yeah, down. Yeah, should be third down. Cor correction, third down. There we go. Okay. Yeah. okay. I, believe, I believe our guy Dave Roberts corrected him. We need Dave up here, but That's Dave's trying to get the state championship game, yeah, right? right? So <laughs> we loaned him out for one game. That's right. He'll be back, though, for the 7-8 championship coming up in uh, just a little bit here. Uh, again, Milton versus Walton in that one, and we've got a timeout, timeout. by Coffee. Coffee. Yep. That is their second charge we'll make timeout. Sure everybody's of the half. on the same page right here. It's important. It's third and 27. Don't give up anything crazy. Keep everything in front of you and get them to the ground. You can give up 10, 12 yards, but don't let anybody get behind you and don't let anybody get picked because you're in man to man. That's right. 331 left here in the 5A championship. It's still to come here on GPB. It's our final championship tilt of this fantastic week. The Milton Eagles at 12 and 2 taking on the Raiders of Walton at 14 and 0. It's the boys class 7A championship coming up. Uh, Matt Stewart and Wayne Gandy on the call there for GPB. And uh, glad you're here with us. Hang tight. Uh, I know that we're a few minutes late on the kickoff of that one. But uh, trust us, it'll be worth the wait. The two quarterbacks there, those yeah. two, wow. Yeah, yeah. Luke Nickel going to Miami. Yep. Jeremy Heklinski going to Wake Forest. And if you haven't seen Jeremy Heklinski, yeah. I'm telling you, it's worth the price of admission. Yeah. His dad, along coach, his uncle played quarterback yes. in Illinois and Western yes. Illinois, has been a coach as well. Jeff Heklinski. He's different. Chicago suburbs. Good lineage. Third and 27 now. Barry. Iverson Gifford and so yet another player making a big play Wait, look back at this tape this will be about a list line about 15 guys who've all made really big plays yes they only rush three yeah he comes from the nose guard he just pushes presses steps up makes a play it's kind of like that old saying, man, when they smell blood in the water. Yeah, yeah. They're and, sharks and right they, now. And they do. They are sharks right now up front for coffee. Fourth and 34. Creekside has to get to the 32-yard line of coffee. McCrary comes in. Four receivers. Deep. Picked off. And who got it? But Jaden Hancock, who had an interception in his hands a few plays ago, dropped it. It was a pick six. He dropped it. But take a look. Got a player down right now, but Hancock made up for it. I love that he went down. Yeah. He went down, not do anything else crazy. Nope. They have. And there's the ring me, but we got a player down for coffee right yeah. now. Stoppage in play. One more look at this. Read this play well. Just step right in front of it. First turnover of the game, and oh my goodness, what a what a time to get it. A player who was down. Maybe it was cramping up there. Back up now. Yep. Isaiah Johnson. 17 yards on the return before he basically took a knee. And what a time to get your first interception of the season. Jaden Hancock. <laughs> he made up. He'll be able to sit on the bus tonight. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I dropped that first one. I wasn't dropping that that's one. That's right. <laughs> but most importantly, man, every coach that's watching this game right now is appreciative that he went to the ground. Yeah. High IQ, understanding. Shows you, shows you not selfish. That's right. That's Don't right. do anything else. We got the turnover. Let's go to the ground and finish this thing off. Timeout. Creekside. Kirby Smart that tried to get Kenny Ringo to go down a couple years ago, <laughs> and it didn't work. That's right. But this young man went to the ground. 
always have to understand time and score time and score Creekside taking its final timeout. 226 and how about the fans coming up from Douglas. They've waited their entire school history for this one. Mm -hmm. I said it last night with Perry. I'll say it again with coffee. This group right here will always be special. Yeah. This, yeah. They will have 10 year reunions yep. and they will have 20 year reunions. Yep. The stories will get better. Yep. Hancock will picked off three passes in 20 years. Exactly. <laughs> but 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 this community and these people that are sitting here will tell people I was there that night. Yeah. Yeah. I was there. I was yep. there when we won and. It's just a special moment for that first one. And boy it is a huge crowd. I mean it is. I think of some of the great championship crowds that I've had a chance to see over the years. Conklin the County ones. always travels. Yes. Call, yes. Yeah. This is this may be too, but it may be the biggest. This, this is one of the biggest ones I've seen. Yeah. It is impressive. Second and ten. Brown determined. He wants to finish it the right way. Stiff arm and he before he's brought down. It's kind of fitting, isn't it? It is. It's it kind is. of fitting, man. Yeah. It's kind of fitting. They just about sealed the state championship with yep. zero running through people, seeking contact. And what a punishing runner. Boy, I tell you, he is just 30 yards there. Look at it. Smile and feed me. <laughs> Special player Fred Brown. Look at his numbers. 32 for 164. And the one yard touchdown to end the first half made it 21 nothing Trojans in the red zone Brown Good tackle there to keep him in play Ricky McCrary Tay lost in him you know on the other side is most likely going to lose this game but you got to mention the two McQuarrie twins yeah, and yep. those two young men yep. what they meant to Creekside. Yep. Yep. And I believe if I'm correct Roderick is starting his 50th game for Creekside. Wow, OK. And you're talking about a high school career. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and people won't forget these two these two twin brothers at, at Creekside anytime soon their dad coaches Rance McQuarrie on the staff. But it'd be a very emotional locker room but it'd be worth mentioning those two twins yep. because they have meant a lot to this program. And there they are. You see them both emotional. Brown again. Still no whistle, and because he still hasn't gone down. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know if he just sees. I, I'm not going to the ground because I don't want to get get back up. Right. <laughs> I don't want somebody to help me get back up. That's right. What a season for these Creekside Seminoles. To your point, because this holds 13 and two season, the runner-up. Second trip ever to the championship game. 2013 champions. They defeated Tucker and Sight running up against a determined and uh, it really sound outstanding uh, coffee. Trojan football team. Brown again, <laughs> grabbing his leg. <laughs> yeah, he's two big boys, Williams and Boyro. Creekside out of timeouts, fourth and six. About a nine second differential on the clock. They're going to, they might call timeout here and get them in a formation to take a knee. Yep. The celebration is underway. This is what a first ever state championship looks like. Look at that crowd. There's a great shot. Yep. Everybody's going to get a T-shirt tonight, mm -hmm. yes. one way or the other. Yep. Timeout. Coffee. Yeah, That's the, timeout. the third and final timeout of the half. Look at Coach Coe won four state championships at Madison County in Florida. We ask him, where does this team rank with those teams? And he just said it's the best group of kids. Wow. They listen. Yeah. Every day they practice hard. We have no issues. You see those stars on back of their helmets as Nikki said earlier those stars come from faculty members. They have to call Coach Coe and say he's been good this week. Yeah he hadn't been late this week. Yeah. 
And I'm glad my high school coach didn't do that because I played 15 <laughs> games and I might have had one or two stars. <laughs> One more reminder, uh, by the way, if you're just joining us, we still have one more game coming up. If you're looking for it, it is on the way. Milton versus Walton, the Class 7A championship. Again, a couple of fa fantastic quarterbacks uh, in that one. Oh, speed uh, of the game. It's going to be outstanding. Fourth down play here. Or raise hands to his second rushing touchdown. We'll put the icing on the cake. For the Trojans from Coffee. What a night. This place is erupted, man. It is. Boy, this is loud. That place hurt him all night. See the end crash, quarterback keeper. See Coach Co know it. Look at him. <laughs> Big win, history win for for coffee. Sure is. Extra point is good, 31-14. We're going to ask Matt Stewart on the next game if this is the biggest crowd he's ever seen as a in, in a state championship. Yeah. Is this one of the loudest I've ever yeah, seen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that. And they have no artificial horns. No, 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 no noisemakers in here at all. Artificial noisemakers, only the human ones. And they have brought it. They have brung it this entire night. 5A championship. About to go to Coffee County for the first time ever. And again, 7A championship is on the way. Walton versus Milton. What a fantastic week this has been, a championship football. Girls flag football beginning each of our three days. Some many memorable moments along the way. We saw a career passing record fall on Monday. Aaron Philo, the quarterback, who's headed to Georgia Tech. What a career, man. Oh, leading Prince Avenue to the another state title. Start things off on Monday. Triple overtime for Pierce County yesterday over Rock Marks. And what a heartbreaker. You knew somebody was going to get their heart broke. Yeah. Because you don't talk about two teams that left it on the field. Oh, yeah. Outstanding. I'll say this about Rockmark, because I live in that area. And I'm telling you right now, they are young and they are loaded. They are. Yeah. They are young. Yep. Kickoff. Taken by McCrary. Still on his feet. Champions for the first time. Enjoy it, Douglas, Georgia. You waited a long time on this one. What a season for the Coffee Trojans. We mentioned before 28 times previously since 1982, we've had a number one versus number two. Of those games, the number one ranked team won 16 times. Coffee makes it 17, 11, and two ties. The road to winning a state championship in Georgia is almost impossible. Yeah. To do it 15 and 0. Yeah. It's, it's next level. It is. It it's is next level. And to do it the way that they've done it, allowing an average coming in of less than seven points per game, less than a touchdown per game. Yep, defensively, man. Everybody talks about them, the stats. I knew they were for real when they beat Cass 30 to nothing. Yeah. Because I've watched Cass all year, mm -hmm. and Cass can score at any time. Mm -hmm. And they put a goose egg on them. And yeah. I knew right then they had different dudes on defense. It's been impressive. Hats off to Creekside. It hurts tonight, but they can remember that they lost only two games to the number one team in the country and now the number one team in 5A here in Georgia. What did John Nelson say 
they're radio announcers, 84 years yeah, old. Can we yeah. get him a ring? Yeah. Can we give my they man need, a ring? They need to. <laughs> Can we get my man a ring? Because <laughs> he has waited a very Nobody long time. Nobody <laughs> has waited longer than my man has. That's right. <laughs> get our radio guy coffee, a state championship <laughs> ring, and let's get that thing ordered. That's right. That's right. <laughs> 5A championship 31 to 14 the final coffee over Creekside and a cast of thousands in the stand here and you can see the guys here there's some t-shirts and they're all running over to the sideline to get their t-shirt and as Rusty said they probably have some for the crowd as well I'm telling you right now they're going to say whoever the vendor is in that town it's about <laughs> he's already printing them <laughs> The stage is set and great season by Creekside. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I spent a lot of time around this this crew and they got a lot of seniors and they put a lot in this program. But, but this program is not going anywhere. No, it's, it's not taking a step back. Yeah. They just didn't win game 15. Right. Yeah, they're going to be a threat to be right back in this building again. Coach Mo Dixon state championships for 2023. See the McCrary oh, twins there. Roderick, zero. Ricky, one. Incredible careers. Coach Mo Dixon, he said what he has done down there is outstanding. And like you said, they're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. They're going to lose some talented kids. That one and zero right there, mm -hmm. two. I don't know where they're going, but I can assure you, wherever they go to play college football, they're going to be a handful to deal with yep. because those two kids are football players. He ain't letting go of the ball still. No. <laughs> He's like, no, listen, listen to me. Y'all can do what you want with all that trophy stuff. I've toted this thing all year. The ball's going. That's right. With me. And that jersey says, thank goodness it's over. I'm not getting tugged and pulled and ripped and anything else. Fred Brown, what a performance. What a year. For coffee. Standing ovation in the stands from the folks who made the drive from Douglas. 5A champions. And the time is here. Let's go down to John Nelson for the presentation. Larry Smith, thank you very much. First and foremost, a shout out to our great ambassadors from Creekside. Tremendous season for Maurice Dixon being the runners up here in 5A. They always say there's a first time for everything. And it's going to be a first time coming up in short order to present the trophy in 5A. It is the executive director of the Georgia High School Association, Dr. Robin Hines. Thank you. First, I want to congratulate Creekside on an awesome season. Thank you for the folks that came and supported them. Congratulations. Next, I do believe all of Coffee County is here to support these guys. I do not think that there's anybody left in Douglas, Nichols, Broxton, Ambrose, you're all here. And I'll tell you, you've waited a long time for this moment to win this championship. And I have to say, you know, you got here about five years ago, and unfortunately, we had some weather that snowed us out of this building. And to be able to come back in the premier venue in the country and to have your guys perform like they did on this huge, big stage, what does it mean to your program and how you feel about your kids, Coach? That's the best group of human beings in the world right there in them white T-shirts and them white jerseys. I told our principal you win championships with good people, and that's great young men right there. Since I've been here, it's been nothing but yes, sir, and no, sir. Their helmets are filled with stickers from their teachers at school. That's the only way they can get them. And that's why they're the state champions. Coach, I'm so proud of you. In short order, 
as someone who won four titles in five years in a state southern from Georgia in very short period of time you have won a state title here what has this ride been like for you guys I don't know they told me I couldn't win in Georgia but them guys right there proved them wrong and this coaching staff is top of the line the best in the business right out there that coaching staff because they love our kids and then people right up there have done nothing but support us from Jump Street Tremendous athleticism on both sides of the ball. It was suffocating at times defensively and powerful on offense. Yeah, that, that's who we are. Our kids did a great job all week of just getting ready to play the next game. I don't, I don't feel like this bothered them. You know, they came last night and got in here and saw it. And they truly, I felt like they just treated it like the next game. But obviously it's not the next game. It's the last game. And they'll be state champions. They'll be undefeated. And they'll be the first ones to do it at Coffee High School forever. From the time of Bonnell Royal and Robbie Pruitt, somebody get Gene Wade a ring. It's going back to Douglas. Can we get the trophy? Get the trophy. Let's send it back upstairs to Larry and Rusty. Hey, Coach Cole, hey, give us that hardware there. He said, man, we earned that thing. <laughs> that's Fred right. Brown wants the ball, he wants the trophy. That's right, that's right. Rusty, your thoughts. What an outstanding uh, game and, and what a performance uh, by Coffee. I just, it's so hard to do, man. It's hard to do 15 and 0. Yeah. It's hard to be the first team ever to do it because they listened. And Coach Coe said, nobody said I can win in Georgia. Yeah. He won it, and Coffee now has something for a state championship forever. That's right. Yep. Never will be forgotten, and we will never forget this 5A championship. Title tilt it was just outstanding. Hensley got us started on the ground. That was a play there to me. And then right there, the pass to Coe make it 14 0. Big Fred Brown just before halftime. The play review. Yes, it is a touchdown. We start the second half. Creekside getting on the board. Kelly with a touchdown catch. And then Kelly with another fourth quarter. Would they have enough? But this defense was just incredible. Coffee, the Trojans, champions of 5A. It's been a thrill for Nikki and Rusty and everybody here. I'm Larry. Stay with us. The region's tailgate party is up next. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Riding down the road and you're doing just fine when a car in front of you crosses over the line. They're in your space, not looking at your face. Distracted drivers all over the place. Say, we will, we will buckle up. Sing it. Say, we will, we will buckle up. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. Our number one priority is protecting our players. That's why we're writing new rules for the sport and developing innovative educational tools that protect our athletes. This is player protection. This is high school football. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. TV, but uh, the burgers are ready. Yeah. Oh, burgers, right. burgers. I want a burger. All right, I'll line up. Two.
Welcome to the GBP Tailgate Party presented by Regions. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. I want to thank our friends at Regions one more time today for being with us all 27 years that we have had high school football on the GBP airwaves. So thank you. I'm Hannah Gooden. We are live from the Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the 2023 GHSA Boys and Girls Championships. We are heading into our last game of the day. We have crowned 10 title winners and we just wrapped up the 5A matchup between Creekside and Coffee. Let's get you caught up on what happened on Georgia's EMC scoreboard. Georgia's EMC's so much more than electricity. So the Trojans took down the Seminoles 31 to 14. They remain undefeated, earned their first state title in school history. And I'll tell you what, their fans from Douglas turned out. This place has been so loud. Let's send it down to the sidelines where my girl, Nikki Noto Palmer, has our Cotton Commission Player of the Olivia. Game. Hey, thanks there, Hannah. That's right, this is an exciting part of the game. The game's not over yet because we got to introduce the Georgia Cotton Commission player of the game. And with me right here, I have Ben Evans. He is the vice president and general manager of Coffee County Gin. And now it's time to introduce our player of the game. And you can't bring him down, Fred Brown. Rick, congratulations. And thank you for bringing home the first state championship in Coffee High history. Thank you. All right, Freddie, let's talk about it. You made history tonight, not only personally as the player of the game, but your team brought home the first title to coffee, and I think the whole town was here to witness it. How are you feeling? Feeling great. Um, feel like a dream right now, trying to take it all in at one time. And, you know, great to be a Trojan. All right, let's talk about those numbers, 166 rushing yards and one touchdown. But you said you wanted to get to 200 tonight. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, I wanted to go a little over, you know, show what I can do, showcase my talent. And, but I'm, I'm still thankful and grateful for, the, for 166. Well, as someone whose job is to be the eyes and ears on the sideline and to watch great talent, Fred, you brought that tonight. Can you just walk me through the journey of this historical season? I mean, there's been a lot of ups and downs, but we stood together. We, we, we leaned on each other, and then we just we came through. All right, my last question for you. Coach Co came in, and it seems like everybody just rallied around him, believed in him. What can you say about his leadership? He's a, he's a great man. I mean, he's you can depend on him whenever you need him. He never he never told us wrong. He always does always there and you know what you're always going to be a state champion congratulations soak this in hannah back to you for the tailgate show thanks nick and congratulations to all the trojan fans who did not make it to the bins and are watching from home history was just made and we have many more teams and players to crown but what about all the student athletes that have excelled all season long let's unveil our 2023 gpb all-state team and we'll start with the all-stars on offense 